Okay then. Okay, two minutes. session and the person who worked with the LG Polymers case, he want to share his experience like about 15 minutes. Who session is there, Abhi? Who session?
Good morning, one and all. Today we have a young and dynamic speaker. Let me have a pleasure to introduce Mr. Chaitanya Gautamukkala. He is a director, Sri Veda LLP. He will deliver a presentation on international best practices in chemical and industrial disasters, risk reduction and resilience. Chaitanya Garu, please have a session, sir. Hello, good morning, everyone. Hope you all are good today and enjoying the uh, Vaisak weather. Are you enjoying or no? Yes, okay, good. Uh, today, uh, I'll be speaking about the international best practices in uh, chemical and industrial risk reduction and uh, resilience. Okay, a little background about me. Uh, I have 15 plus years of uh, process safety and risk management experience uh, for various industries, including refining, petrochemicals, mainly oil and gas, refining petrochemicals, uh, LNG, offshore industries, and mainly in the US. I worked, I lived in the US for 14 years, uh, relocated to India in 2020, in the midst of the pandemic, and started my own uh, consulting here in India, in Baizai specifically. And uh, right now, consulting for uh, US projects mainly, uh, that is for Shell. Uh, in 2017, I have won the AICHE 35 under 35 award for safety. AICHE is American Institute of Chemical Engineers, where they selected 35 people uh, under, the, under the age of 35. And uh, I, I was one of the uh, awardees in that. As you can see in the slides, as you can see here, there's, uh, these are all the companies I have uh, consulted for, mainly Shell, Total Ener Energies, BP, ExxonMobil. These are the operating companies I work for, and the uh, engineering contractors are McDermott, Bechtel, as well as for Indian. Uh, in, after returning to India, I've worked for I've done a couple of projects for HPCL, Vizag, uh, Reliance Industries, uh, done a few hazards, and uh, Petronet LNG. Uh, this is my work experience mainly, mostly uh, in process safety and risk management. I did my masters in. Uh, chemical engineering in uh, at Lamar University in Texas. Uh, after that, I worked at these various companies, and then I uh, I'm a licensed professional engineer you know, registered in the uh, state of Texas. I need to get something here in, in India as well. But uh, and also I am a certified safety professional, uh, which from the board of certified safety professionals in from the U.S. Uh, today's agenda, I'll, I'll be speaking about the uh, uh, introduction to process safety and risk management uh, uh, protocol, as well as the, uh, about, we'll talk, go a little bit over accidents, what order accidents, and then we'll go over the historical process safety incidents, both in India and across the world. Uh, then we'll, uh, understand the major accident risk reduction frameworks and regulations that are uh, implemented globally. After that, we look into the process safety management, process safety and risk management uh, through a facilities life cycle. 
I know most of you guys are from the, uh, what kind of audience do we have here? Do we have anybody from the industry here? Uh, it's a group of mixer people. They okay. have industrial experts, response forces, SDRF, NDRF, and uh, disaster revenue and disaster management group people are through there. Okay. So it's a group of mix of people. Okay, so I'll go on a high level, uh, how, how we can prevent accidents, mainly in the prevention aspect, not into the uh, uh, reaction aspect. So today's study will be about mostly based about uh, oil and gas, but that because that is pertinent to oil and gas as well as it can be translated into the other industries from a uh, disaster recovery point of view. And at the end, we'll have a case study on how we can, on the application of uh, one of the risk reduction strategies. First of all, let's get into the uh, terminology on I'll use, I'll be using most of these uh, Okay, back after a break here. Uh, the, these are the terms we'll be using today in today's presentation. First one is the term accident, which means a sequence of events occurring that produce unintended harm to people as well as property. This is in terms of the industrial accidents. And then incident is uh, the loss of containment of material or energy, not all the important point to note here is that not all incidents result in accidents. Uh, so, for example, you have a petroleum tank somewhere in one of the refineries here, and that that releases, uh, there's a leak from that one of the valves there, and it releases some crude oil or gas, gasoline, and you have your emergency response team go and fix that issue, close the valve, fix the, uh, fix the uh, leak from going into a uh, turning into a next incident next uh, escalate into a next level so that that is what is the incident and then next item is the hazard which means uh, an inherent chemical or physical property that has the potential to cause harm to people property and the environment uh, next item is the consequence which is the measure of the expected effects of the results of an incident, example, a fire, explosion, a toxic release, or uh, that might have an environmental impact. Likelihood is a measure of the uh, expected probability or frequency of occurrence of that event. Risk is the measure, it's the multiplication of the consequence and likelihood in simple terms, but it's a measure of magnitude of loss times the likelihood of the incident to occur. So what is process safety and risk management? Mainly going into the process safety side here. Process safety hazards can give rise to major accidents that involve release of potentially dangerous materials. Uh, recently, I think we have seen uh, the LG polymer incident like last in 2020 in uh, Vizag where there was a styrene that was released. So that is the release of a potentially dangerous material. That, if that would have you know, caught fire or that would have uh, resulted in an explosion, you would have had a lot of uh, fatalities. Luckily, they were, I mean, not luckily, but it was unfortunate that that incident happened and 13 people were killed, but uh, we don't want those incidents to happen. So these are the major process safety uh, Accidents that happen, you know, we have been seeing those quite often in uh, Andhra Pradesh recently. Uh, even last last month, I think there was an incident in a, like a boiler blast in I forget the place, but uh, in a pharmaceutical uh, uh, industry, and that resulted in like six fatalities. So, which is not good. We we as a community, we don't want those accidents to happen. So, for, first thing to do for those accidents not to happen is we need to have adequate risk management procedures in place. So you can see there, uh, 
Yeah, this is the release of flammable, toxic, or reactive material. How, how many of you remember Bhopal, 1984? I think a lot, lot of you, I mean, might have heard about it. And that, that was a release of uh, toxic material there, methyl isocyanate. And then uh, in, I think, 1997, Vishakhapatnam had a, a fire incident in the Vaisak refinery. So that's, and that resulted in, a, uh, that was a bad accident also. So people usually confuse between process safety and HSC. Process safety is a little different compared to occupational safety or HSC. Uh, process safety deals with impact to the worker, that is the employee in the facility. It also deals with reducing risk to the public. Okay, people living outside the facility also you know, affected. So, for example, as I mentioned earlier, 13 uh, people were killed during the LG polymer incident. Most of them were public. And then the environmental impact effects from resulting from that accident. So we don't want those to happen. As well as at the end, companies look for their bottom line all the time, which is to protect their uh, what the asset like uh, don't want any accident to ha happen and that accident could result in a fire or explosion and that could destroy your facility you don't want that to happen also so so process secret safety deals with all these four elements whereas occupational safety deals with the worker impact that is specifically to the uh, person in or employee of that facility so don't confuse of process safety with occupational safety. Process sa occupational safety also, you know, it's not just, uh, it's all, it's mainly about the personal protective equipment like the hard hat, the uh, safety glasses, the steel toe boots, and uh, we don't want people to get into the harm's way. So that's what pro process or occupational safety is. This is one of the, uh, this is one of the risk reduction processes that is applied globally, mainly in Europe, Australia, Singapore, uh, some of the South, South American uh, countries also use this uh, approach, where it's called the ALARP approach, which is the reducing, reducing the risk to as low as reasonably practicable, A-L-A-R-P. So in the, in the top, so you have a hazard, and if that you identify the hazard in your operating facility or in your community, and then you assess the risks from that hazard. Once you assess the risks, you come up with different control measures to reduce the risk from that hazard. And then uh, you, during the course of running your facility or the uh, the the plant, you would uh, manage that those control barriers which you have. As you can see here, there are three different regions. We would like to be here, but it's not practical during uh, you know, uh, no operating of facility. So if you follow good practices, industry good practices, like uh, several, like India has the OASD and other uh, requirements for the oil and gas industry. So if you follow those, uh, that is broadly acceptable. Beyond that, you are not able to uh, reduce the risk by just applying these good practices. Then you add additional uh, risk reduction measures, uh, which are like uh, people responding after the incident has happened. That is the emergency response uh, team would go and deploy their uh, recovery measures. So that, that could be one of the risk reduction measures. And then we don't want those risk reduction measures to be too expensive. So that is called grossly disproportionate. I know this is some, I think some of this might go uh, over your head right now, but uh, if you have any questions, you can ask me later. And so we would like to be in this tolerable region. And uh, uh, the, the this one is the intolerable region. We don't want our facility to op be operating in this region. So that, that could re uh, result in severe accidents. So what is, how many of you have fixed deposit accounts or compound interest accounts? Good, I see only one hand, but yeah, fixed deposit is like uh, you put in a thousand rupees in your bank. First year you get uh, 50 rupees, 
Second year, you get uh, another, like, for example, if you have 5% interest of fixed, uh, like a compound interest, then on second year, you get like 52.50, 52 rupees, 50 paise. And then it goes on. After the end of uh, like 10 years, you would get around uh, maybe 8,000 rupees, something like that, 8,200. But if it's a simple interest, you'll just get 7,500 rupees. So the difference is 700 rupees. Similarly, for uh, in the process safety world or the industrial safety world, you have incidents that occur, like small release. You think, okay, it's a small release. Don't want to, uh, you know, it's okay. We do, we do, there's no accident. There's no people killed. There's no injury. So you're okay. But it's not okay because these small incidents add up. They're compound into accidents. So you don't want the compounding effect to be happening in the industry. That is not good. So there are, for preventing accidents, there are two different ways or approaches. One approach is a proactive approach, which normally most of us don't do. The other approach is reactive approach. You're driving a car, you're going at 60, the speed limit is 80 kilometers per hour, but uh, you're driving at 100 kilometers per hour because it's a, it's a flat road, there's nobody in sight. And then what happens? So suddenly somebody comes in the wrong way and you slam your brakes, so that's reactive. You are you are trying to prevent an accident there after being reactive. The other approach is following the speed limits, looking, be observed, be focused on your driving, and uh, so you go at 80. If the limit is 80 kilometers per hour, you still go at 75, 80 kilometers per hour, and you be within the limits. That's the proactive approach. If I can, if it makes sense to all of you. So in the proactive approach is. Uh, Identify and analyze the potential accidents. The, uh, then the preventive programs would be in place and procedures would be in place to prevent those incidents. But we don't do that in the industry. That's what leads to a lot of accidents. We are always in the reactive mode. Some, some uh, explosion occurs, a fire occurs, people die, and then the government comes in and then they, are, they give, I know, I'm saying government, but yeah, that's typically all over the world where uh, the after effects, people react and they they give uh, the uh, the compensation post the accident. That should not be the case. We should always try to focus on the before part, try to prevent the accidents. So people think safety is expensive. Uh, putting you know designing for safety is very expensive. So they don't have budget for that. We have. Uh, we need to make profit. The production engineers have uh, the main thing is for them to produce and make profit. But if you think safety is expensive, then try an accident. Here are the cost examples for accident. I, maybe it's not so visible, but yeah, if, for example, if there's an accident, there'll be people injured, then there'll be medical expenses coming out of that. Then uh, replacement cost for the equipment damage. Also, the plant might be down for maybe several months at a stretch, which is not good. And in the case of LG polymers, I think it was shut down. I'm not sure what exactly happened, but uh, so you don't want that to happen. Uh, the injured employee uh, lost time and the replacement cost, and all these are the various costs. So safety is not, if you, safety, if you look in the terms of an accident, it's not expensive. So these are the uh, major, some of the major industrial accidents that happened in India. First one is the the, the very significant one, which is uh, in Bhopal on December 3rd, 1984, where uh, a material called methyl isocyanate released, and the after effects of that is still still there in the population. There, uh, there are 20,000 people killed. 20,000 people is not less, even with the country over a billion people. 20,000 people is in one person is a big deal, but I don't know if you care about that, but yeah, uh, 20,000 people were killed and then more than 500,000 people or 5 lakhs people were injured. Then there was an incident in Jaipur uh, in 2009 where there's a storage terminal which got, you know, caught uh, one of the gasoline tanks there caught fire and that resulted in uh, much 11 people being killed and over 5,000 people in the surroundings evacuated. 
in india and around the world if you have a factory if you have an industry people build or community communities develop around that facility typically that those facilities should be outside in a specific industrial zone but in the olden days that was not the case even now i think in india we don't have separate communities for uh, and we don't divide the communities as as well as the industry that's not good because once you have more population surrounding a facility that would result in more death to public and coming home back to vizag this 1997 incident on september 15th where there was a lpg leak and then that resulted in a explosion and killing more than 50 people and uh, 60000 people were in my, that were evacuated i was studying my 10th standard then uh, and we were playing a cricket match and that the next the same day i think there was a, a rain and i could see the because of the smoke in the air i could see the drops of black you know black spots on my white dress that day uh, that that incident is you know ingrained in my memory so we don't want that to happen to us happen to us or to our children so please be vigilant about this kind of process safety uh, incidents and these are some of the major Indust uh, industrial accidents across the world, where, for example, this uh, nuclear plant in Chernobyl, Ukraine, where uh, in 1986, where some of the uh, radioactive gases were released, and you know, 600, 600, how many, 500 to 600 people were killed, and uh, more than 16,000 people, 300,000, 300,000 people were evacuated. Sorry, it was 600,000 people were injured, not killed. Uh, then this Mexico City. incident where again that's the lpg storage terminal uh where that resulted in an explosion and uh, 5000 to 7000 people were injured and about 500 to 600 people were killed north sea in scotland that was a oil platform which exploded and what 160 people were killed so we have those kind of facilities also around andhra and also on the which called the mumbai high in uh, in maharashtra offshore which which could you know if you don't uh, maintain the safeguards or barriers that could result in these kind of accidents so how's everyone doing is it okay following <laughs> okay so these are the uh, major accident risk reduction frameworks and laws globally so after Uh, there was an incident in Italy called Seveso disaster, where several thousand people were killed in 1976. And after that, the United Kingdom and the European Union they came up with their own regulations uh, called the Seveso II Directive. And UK also came up with their own in, on, called the uh, Coma or Control of Major Accident Hazards. Uh, and also the UK HSC, which is the Health and Safety Executive. USA came up with so USA after the Bhopal tra tragedy, USA came up with this uh, OSHA uh, process safety management of highly hazardous chemicals. Again, in the US, there's a body called Center for Chemical Process Safety, which came up with this book called Risk Based Process Safety. This is a framework. It's not a law, but it's just a industrial guidance. All these are laws by the specific country. again this also uh, resulted from the bopal tragedy again australia has their own control measures or regulations for uh, major hazard facilities major hazard facilities are the facilities like hpcl or the storage terminals or the uh, uh, oil platforms oil drilling areas so these are all the major hazard facilities as if you can relate to this these this australia thing came up after the flixboro uk incident and piper alpha singapore a small country maybe smaller than andhra pradesh state so they have their own national environmental agency for controlling major accidents mexico smaller country than india they have uh, their own uh, regulation or law for controlling these major accidents so which country is missing here why think about that after the meeting So uh, 
these are the status of regulation development implementation and co compliance in us europe uk india and china these are the major you know major countries which we can look at here and uh, x x means that already there are implementation procedures y means there are procedures and processes in later phase of development so this some, somebody is already working on it or those governments are working on it z or z is uh, where any of these control measures are not existent they're not there right now there's no laws to prevent these process safety incidents so process safety regulations compliance audit you can see us european union uk Ch india china z in india is we don't have any process safety regulations in india i, I mean there are process safety regulations but it's not a law it's there are there but I, i'm not sure how much is being followed all these countries have process safety regulations even then there are several accidents that happen in our case we don't have that's why we have these incidents that happen or accidents that happen every every week if you can see the paper uh, you see an accident in either andhra pradesh or maharashtra or gujarat this is that's really sad but that's the reality so yeah if you can see india has all z in all categories we don't have any metrics to follow which we could measure we don't have uh, any process safety for offshore uh, regulation there's no protection of critical infrastructure like pipelines or anything like that we don't i'm not sure how much we care about the community and environment i know all of us really care about it that's why we are in this uh, public domain but we as uh, public servants i think we should be implementing this or making it a point to take it to the next level and get this uh, excuse me regulations and acts correct but we do have a couple of acts for protection of community and environment regulations are also there amendments are also there yeah so i think from there z should be replaced okay so this i got from a paper but a, a disclaimer here i'm not that conversant with the indian government but uh, maybe i can update the slides but again we are we have there but how much are we following that's the issue right how much is are the companies or how much is the government behind these companies to implement those that's the issue sir i have uh, this one uh, so that's because uh, see this all this is uh, why we are not uh, having this guidelines is it is not applicable to the employees employees hpcl has got 3000 contract laborers so i feel they are the people who are killed in that uh, this one establishment when there is any accident and they don't get covered in all this uh, insurance or uh, whatever it is that it is a third party laborers what the inter what the people work in india and that is the reason you have a lot of people killed and which is not uh, accounted and this is the reason why your slide is right because all this is there on books on laws and it is only applicable to the employees working in the organization which they don't uh, this one need it, uh, it doesn't apply to them yeah so that's you price. you hardly find any employee dying in hpcl i have come across i have been studying hpcl for quite long industrial disasters i have seen all this contract laborers who are from other districts who come there for their living they are get killed because they are unskilled first one and they don't they don't know what are the precautions or what ought to be taken mm -hmm. and once uh, anything any incident happens they snub it off it is happening in uh, our yeah. state also sir it, i am from bangalore it is happening in that also okay. within matter of seconds the matter is closed and uh, this one the laborer is uh, whoever dies it na the body shifted also yeah i i went into investigation where he collapsed on a building and immediately the body was shifted by the police itself so yeah. this is the extent of this one but comparatively what you are telling all this is there on books on law on law all this everything is there but this is not going to work in india sir that is what and yeah. our one speaker was telling uh, we have 130 crore of population so 10 people dying doesn't make much of a difference yeah i really felt I mean, but uh, it doesn't make difference to the whole one oh yeah whole population there but but for the for the family yeah, they are the family, comparing yeah. a common man's life yeah. to 130 crores of population that is that the yeah. doesn't mean anything right i mean it, in the grand scheme of things it might not affect but Correct. for that family who is affected by that person dying that is the that's, that's the issue right if some if i die my family would be affected 
probably not anybody cares but my family cares right so that's all the, the labor laws are uh, gone into the wind now yeah. i think so labor codes has come in but none of the states have come forward to implement it hmm. so a lot of benefits in the labor codes in the latest what is developed by government of india is uh, put into place it is almost two years now none of the people have given any what do you call feedback on this whether to go for it or no. should they should they should they go for it Yeah. So that uh, that is the status of India because there is nobody there to I mean, bell the cat. I mean, not only India, even in US or UK, these accidents happen because uh, people are not educated. That yeah, for example, e- even the uh, countries like which have these regulations, the contractors who come in, they they come in, they don't get adequate training, and they are the ones who get affected. Uh, like like there was an incident in accident in 2005 in US in uh, Houston, near Houston where uh, explosion happened, and most of the co- people killed were contractors there. About 20, 30 people were killed because they are not properly trained. Because they are on a you know uh, time constraint, they are trying to build this facility. They are trying to get it up to speed, uh, turn around, start it up, and get the production going. So then this incident happened. They had all these laws and regulations, but even then it happened. So implementation, when it comes to implementation, that's the biggest hurdle anywhere in the world. But I- India, I think we sh- I don't know uh, we should be more proactive because uh, we should value life more compared to. Anywhere in the world, we should be uh, valuing life. That's what is we need to keep in our mind. Oh, this is not so visible. Is it visible? Okay. Okay, the background color is not so good. So, uh, but anyway, these are the uh, the comparison between OSHA. That's the US. Occupational Safety Health Administration's PSM elements. So one of somebody mentioned about like contractor. Uh, so there is one element for contractor safety in this. There are 14 elements in OSHA PSM. One of the elements is contractor safety, where we have to educate the contractors on the safety, on the safety, on the hazards in the facility, on how would you react to something if something was released, how would you react to that? And uh, yeah, it's not so visible here, but. Sorry about that. In my laptop, it was okay, but here it's not so visible. But yeah, there are. Uh, so after that, OSHA has their own PSM, and then CCPS came up with the 20 different elements. The main thing here is uh, developing a process safety culture or a safety culture that comes from top down, either from the government or from the company, uh, company management, the CEO level. So that that's very important. And then the we need to understand the hazards and risks associated with that facility. and then once we identify those we need to manage those hazards and uh, risks how we manage that are, are, are all these different elements and if something happens if an accident happens we should learn from the accident and make sure that it doesn't happen the same or not same or similar accidents don't happen again in the future that's another important aspect here so these are a couple of examples from uh, the uh, from the us about the uh, loss that exists there so this is the the life cycle of uh, you know identifying a hazard and how we can reduce the risk uh, throughout the life from starting from the uh, research research and development stage going into the conceptual design engineering startup during normal operations and if you are demolishing or modifying the facility also when you are uh, putting it to rest basically so anywhere in the life cycle of facility uh, managing the risk is very important maybe this is also not so clear but uh, these are the various techniques in this slide you'll have various techniques i can send you this slide afterwards if you are interested you can let me know i can email you the slides later but these are the uh, hazard or risk analysis techniques that can be applied through the facilities uh, life cycle so th- this is called a bow tie you know the bow tie which, which we wear for parties or something like that so similar to that this is a a visual representation of the hazard that can uh, or the risks that are inherent to your facility so this gives management or the government about the risks involved at that particular facility this i i made it from the uh, lg polymer incident 
basically i just a personal example i just made it by myself it's not checked or reviewed by anybody just for my understanding i made it where the top event was loss of containment the hazard is the styrene monomer which released in 2020 may and what happened after it released it that was a toxic release and a lot of people public were exposed to that and uh, we as i mentioned earlier we had 13 fatalities why that happened there was a runaway reaction where the temperatures inside the tank suddenly increased that resulted in the monomer the styrene monomer going out of the vent stack and into the atmosphere and uh, exposing the public around or, as well as the employees why so these are all the preventive controls that should have been there but but were not some of them were missing that led to this incident being uh, happening and these are the recovery measures where the fire and gas or the gas detection didn't work i think uh, the control of ignition was not there the emergency response was there so some of the uh, the emergency response task force were involved once this release happened so this is like a gives an uh, like a high level overview of about the incident so this is one of the case studies uh, which just for example you you have so many tanks or so many industries around uh, visakhapatnam or andhra pradesh or all over india i think most of the, there are people from other states also here but you have uh, you know industries where you store chemicals in a tank for example and somebody typically what happens is uh, there's a tank i put, this is the example of a gasoline but there can be other other uh, other contents of the tank where you keep filling until and uh, once it reaches a certain level this level instrument it uh, senses that and it closes the valve so there's no input going into the uh, the tank but what happens if this 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 instrument doesn't work as it's supposed to work what happens this valve this uh, the instrument doesn't give a correct reading and you keep sending that contents or material into the tank and that that will overfill and go out of the tank and that could result in a fire or explosion or a toxic exposure so this scenario is overfill of this gasoline tank for example i showed you the jaipur uh incident in 2009 where there was a gasoline tank that overfilled and a lot of gasoline went out of the tank and then uh there was a fire and explosion after that and several people were killed why it did happen because of the malfunction of this instrumentation what's the consequence that's a flammable material that released into the atmosphere and that resulted in fire and explosion resulting in injury and property damage what can we do to prevent this by applying the engineering controls that's one of the risk reduction techniques that's typically employed so there's a, not only in india there's a big incident in uh, bunsfield uh, in united kingdom close i mean london uh, close to london where that's one of the biggest storage terminals for gasoline the similar incident happened where they the the keep pumping the gasoline into the tank it overfilled and it resulted in a biggest explosion ever the it was the main storage terminal for the heathrow airport this happened in 2005 and lot the jet fuel supply to that airport uh stopped and heathrow if you know is one of the busiest air, international airports in the world and that supply of jet fuel to that airport is uh, was cut off because of this accident which happened in bunsville after that accident the industry came up with a new standard to implement is this okay uh the other way is second the second uh, safeguard which is to the operator senses is notified about the alarm notified about this high level in the tank or through alarm or uh, you can see this and then he'll go and close the valve there that will cut off the uh, the supply to the gasoline tank but this is again if this doesn't work 
you won't be able to stop the filling of the tank. So what are the additional risk reduction techniques that can be applied? So you put in a, another list, uh, level instrumentation. I know this, is, this will be a cost adder, but in the grand scheme of things, even this is like if it's like 100,000, maybe one lakh rupees, for example, the cost of it is small compared to if there's an accident and that would dis destroy your tank. The tank, that could result in a loss of production and storage. So that would be maybe 20 lakhs. So if you think that this, this small thing, addition of this small thing is expensive, then the, that could result in an accident that could uh, destroy your facility. So this is a uh, risk reduction technique where you add independent uh, recovery or control measures, basically. Any questions on this? I think this is my last slide. So, uh, yeah. So basically, we went over the terminologies and the, we looked at what is the process safety and risk management. We learned about accidents. We looked at the various uh, major process safety incidents or industrial accidents that occurred all over the world. Uh, we looked at the process safety and risk management through our facilities life cycle. And the last one was a case study. So let's think about ways where we can implement the laws which are already existent in India and see how we can uh, further reduce or implement those laws. That's the, that's the important thing. We have the laws on paper, but implementation is where the missing link is. That should come from the top-down approach, basically. You, from everybody's, uh, uh, should take ownership of that and try to, uh, you know, try to mitigate those uh, accidents. So these are the various references I've used. Yeah, any questions? Which instrument? Yeah, the root cause is a uh, malfunction of this instrument. The instrument. So this level instrument gave a false reading. The tank was filling, but the instrument didn't read correctly. And the, the, the operator from the uh, dock, they kept sending the pump uh, gasoline into the tank, and it overfilled and spilled. Any other questions? I hope, uh... Uh, so, from my experience, I mostly deal with project side where we design uh, during the design stage of a facility. We make sure that we have all the preventive measures in place. If we don't have, that's where we try to focus on. For example, adding this kind of additional instrumentation, which is independent, we see that okay, what happens if this? We identify first thing is we identify the hazard. The hazard is gasoline, for example, here. We identify those hazards, and uh, we make sure that if this doesn't work, what, what do we do next? What additional measures, control measures can we apply? And then we go back, and there are different studies called HAZOP studies or uh, HAZID studies, HERA, probably in India it's HERA studies, where we do reviews with the, with the team members, like including the chemical engineers, the operations personnel, uh, and through the life cycle, we see, okay, if some design changes, the important thing is also making sure those, these elements are applicable. So, I, for example, at Shell, where I work right now, we are, we are a consult for Shell, so that's, that's where the focus is on process safety. One, they have three important things. They have uh, something called a control framework, where the health, safety, security, environment, as well as the asset integrity which is the facilities integrity is also uh, focused upon. So the, all those elements come from the top-down approach where it's made a company standard that you should ma mainly focus on this process safety uh, to prevent accidents from happening. For example, yesterday or day before May, May uh, 11th, we have a safety day where annually one day you, you decide on a topic Everybody on the company wide, they talk about the topic, talk about safety, make sure that there's no accident that happened. 
similar you know similar things can be applied here in for example uh, in india we have the national safety day in india i think uh, where people talk about the uh, safety in the day to day life but from the industry point of view i think it will be a good thing to have something like that sort also in us and uh, uk they have specific institutes or universities which have a separate department for process safety or industrial safety we have some similarly we have in india i think ups has a uh, institute or a department for industrial safety but i think it should be expanded more to to educate the engineers coming out of the into the next uh, next steps of their careers basically if that answers your question Okay, so yeah. India might be lacking in some aspects, yeah. but you will be heading in some of that. Sure. But difference you would like to know. So main difference is the culture, the mindset. That's where that's where that makes the difference. That's where we, for example, from the the top level management, they should make sure that no matter no matter if the production goes up or down, we should focus on process safety. That's where the main uh, difference I find is. even if you have the focus there in us or uk anywhere in the world even then accidents happen but that that doesn't mean that uh, you're not trying you should try but the implementation as for example i went to a pharmaceutical facility in india uh, in vizag close to vizag recently and i've seen the the i won't name it here but uh, the housekeeping was very bad so that's where it starts like the culture starts from how you keep your cables or uh, the piping or you know the labeling aspect so all this all this is very important from the individual level as well as the company management level sir can you just can back, come back to the uh, status of regulation slide sir yeah uh, sir i have one question on this because your expertise is, is in all over the world but our, what do you think why in india we are not able to do you have put all zeros i think so india is uh, almost uh, at the this one I, mean, i that that i got from the paper but yeah because uh, no, that's okay sir i believe in it we <laughs> believe in it because your study maybe it is much more in our, than our understanding yeah. but how do you think we can come out of this situation at the present scenario so we we should make a i, I know we have a loss for uh, community environment all those we have the loss but i am not sure if we have a law for process safety specifically because in for example in us they have the laws as well as they have a separate chemical safety board where once uh, some accident happens this chemical safety board is independent from the government independent from the industry so there are uh, you know accident investigators in that in that chemical safety board who deploy to the site as long, as fast as soon as there's uh, accident happens they go they try to you know see what happened as you mentioned before the police come and take away the body right before they take away the body these guys are there they catch the next flight land there see what happened they they go back and do the incident in root cause analysis come up with the uh, accident history if you, you can you know google that uh, csb.gov is the site they have all the for all the major accidents in the us they have the incident investigation and good have some good animation videos explaining how things happen so that's that's one way the other thing is i think we need to make a a law from the government side that uh, for, especially for process safety where we should implement if companies don't follow this law i mean obviously they will be fined but uh, that even from the company side as well not only government government can only uh, you know uh, imp- what what do you call this uh, come up with a regulation or a law but the actual implementation is done by the company so companies also should be taking responsibility about these uh, uh, accidents and incidents and preventing loss of life i know we have we are 1.3 billion people but life is a life right so even if you are 1.3 we are still a one person so no reporting of fatalities no in the industrial this one sector it so is not can, happening sir so even this yeah this that is that you have rightly mentioned yeah this is so the, this the is metric. where uh, yeah our governance comes uh, this one all the all that comes there yeah. only so the, for example osha for example in us they have the, 
if any incident happens, even if it's a first aid injury, somebody has a band-aid, that, that has to be reported to the government. Here, for example, my cousin was working at a facility here in Vizag, and he was going up a ladder in a, in that facility. it's one of the biggest plants in Vizag. He was going up a ladder, and somebody down, the operator, he, uh, he turned on that uh, crane on top, and he didn't realize that he was, this guy was going to turn the crane on, and he was going up the ladder, he was between the ladder and the crane, and because the crane started, it started moving, and he got you know, squished between the, the crane and the, uh, the ladder, and his, uh, the femur bone broke, and he's still limping now. It happened in 2020, towards the end of 2020. Again, this is because the culture is not, he's a contractor, he was a contractor at the site. The culture was not focused or implemented strictly by the, uh, um, uh, the, the company. That's why it happened. Maybe we lack in coordination of the state laws and the central laws and what we do practically at the, what you call, uh, at the industry level. Correct. So that I link is most probably missing. The link is missing, yeah. So you report it and then you learn from those, those uh, accidents. Accident. That's also missing. So that's the issue there. Thank you, sir. Any more questions? Did you identify uh, like that? Suppose in uh, in uh, Vishakhapatnam the incident happened. Like that, do you identify in some factories that it might happen in the future? Yeah, I mean that's what that's that's where this uh, you know the reporting aspect comes in or learning from learning from incidents comes in where you that for example the LG polymer happened right. Yes, so yes. after that happened, what are we doing to prevent that? I think the Andhra Pradesh factories department came up with more stricter laws now or uh, rules so that the industry is following those so though i mean coming up with, with the rules is one thing but implementing those rules is the the major thing that's where we should be focusing on we come up with a rule but it's okay but next step is the most critical one where the enforcement of those rules is should be very strict yes, sir in the corona time also at the time of corona all the factories were closed when it was opened suddenly even the labor they don't know yeah, that means, uh, that means a little care has to be taken. So that's where you need to. That's where uh, we need to educate those uh, the employees, either the employees as well as contractors, on the the hazards that are pertinent to that facility. That's where prevention is better than cure. Prevention is better than cure. That, that's that's the correct word. Yeah. Yes, sir. That's where. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. Just I want to add uh, this thing, sir. Stairin was an accident in Vishakhapatnam. But Karnataka, we too had two facilities where we had styling. And we never had such an incident. Because we had taken the right care in our industries to maintain the temperature of the styling. Generally, permission was not given for industries during that time. And uh, in our state, specifically both Mysore and Mangalore, uh, they went forward and uh, even the departments coordinated to get them the permission only to run the styling cooling facility. Styrin, yeah. styrin, styrin needs to be cooled. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the temperature that, that, has to be maintained, and they have to add inhibitors to maintain the temperature. Yeah, so those probably, are missing. Probably here this has not happened. Yeah, we don't want to blame anybody. Oh, yeah. it should be a learning. Yeah, blaming doesn't help in yeah. solving the crisis. Correct. Not that I, I am not patting my back that Karnataka has done good or Andhra has not done bad. I mean, not happened anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but here you, you, this exercise is to learn from each other. Correct. Not to criticize somebody. Correct. That's what. That's what we need to. That's why this whole uh, why this gathering is here. Yeah. I, I think we should understand this before criticizing anybody. Correct. Yeah. It's not. It's not a blame game here. We have to just. We have to just learn from each other. Yeah. Has its own difficulties. Yeah. Running the show with the government is a different ball game. Uh, talking from the other end is a different ball game. Correct. One should understand before. Reporting and all it is uh, frequently it is happening. Whatever okay. the incidents in the industries. They are reporting to us and we are investigating also. Okay. And what is happening uh, last, la, last in our country, they are different from the uh, last in the other countries. Yeah, it's most. One yeah. should try to understand the last in the other countries and in our country. What has happened in, in our own country, different states have different enforcement mechanisms. Different states have different way of perceiving the law. Andhra Pradesh now after this incident, they have made it more stringent. 
Mm-hmm. Even we are taking learnings from Andhra Pradesh. In fact, we we study the High Power Committee report. Yeah, that was a very good a, report. Yeah, the High Power Committee report. We have taken action on that. We there are some very good technical recommendations. Correct. Everything we learn from not that uh, learning from desi- disasters, we don't want it to happen, sir. But yeah. if you have to learn, we have to learn. Yeah, we learn, but we learn and also so, implement those. Yeah. In the general general scenario, you take COVID was a this thing we we have we had to learn. Yeah. Today there are a lot of man-made disasters. So you have to learn. Uh, we cannot keep on creating. Here, these forums are meant to exchange information in a very deep, uh, in a very uh, healthy manner. Right. One should not try to have a blame game in this whole exercise. Right. Not only here, even in the fa- in the facility where this ha- accident happens, we should not blame the employee or contractor. Uh, we should uh, we should we understand should what was reason. Up their morale. Yeah, correct. No one wants to kill people. Yeah. Uh, somebody has put up an industry. He, he he doesn't want to kill people. Sir. Correct. He is providing employment. He is pro- he is paying taxes to the government. You cannot talk like a layman when yeah. you are enforcing the act. Correct. Uh, you have to think of lot of aspects, lot of parameters. Yeah. Uh, you should, one should not talk like a layman. Everyone are concerned about all the categories of workers. Not that no one is concerned. Hmm. See, for example, in Karnataka, uh, we don't have the Section 85 enforcement, which you are having in Andhra Pradesh and uh, uh, Tamil Nadu. States. We don't oh. get the report of accidents from such industries. Okay. That, that has become an unorganized sector in Karnataka. Less than 10 workers, it is an unorganized sector. Whereas in Andhra Pradesh, it is an organized sector. Okay. See, these difficulties are there. The concerned governments, what they tell we have to do. Correct. I cannot do whatever I like. A police cannot do whatever he likes. Correct. That, they are all guided by the government, directed by the government. That's why you should have a central level, central yeah. level uh, regulation. Based yeah. Based on the directions of the government. Yeah. We, are, we are accountable to the government. I cannot talk uh, however I like. Yeah, sure. I cannot criticize my government sitting here. Yep. And for contractor also, same law is applicable Correct. everywhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Same laws are because applicable. That's, that's right. For example, the... Uh, the so one, uh, once again, see, uh, 6,000 Union Labor Ministry informed Parliament, 6,500 employees died on duty. Factories, ports, mines, construction. 80% of the fatalities reported in factory settings between 2014 and 2018. There is a report. But how are we learning from that? From, that's, that's the thing, right? Yeah. Now, even in US also, incident happened, right? Yeah, US also. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Things, Likewise, it, in India, maybe maximum. It's more because yeah. it's not so strict, stringent compared to US or UK or other countries. But laws are similar. No, we are, uh, you know. But, but for process safety, that's where the missing link is. And we have more laws on personal, like occupational safety, but not on... Education with respect to industrial safety it is not included in the... Curriculums. You know, yes. Correct. Yeah. Curricular activities. That is one uh, major drawback. Correct. ITA students, uh, you know, diploma engineers, engineers, they don't mm-hmm. have any of these, you know, no. studies. Even for me, for example, I did my chemical engineering here, and until I went to US, I didn't know about what is process safety. So that's that's the issue, right? So I, for my personal example. First of all, they have to change in the education system. Correct. Once they have all this in the education system, yeah. then automatically things will be better. Correct. That is not in, happening. In fact, in our department, we have started driving this. Uh, we have started going to ITA colleges and we are educating the ITA college uh, final year students on industrial safety. We are distributing the booklets on industry because uh, we consider the ITA students as our future stakeholders. They are the front line, right? They are the front line. Who, who, yeah. And we each are thinking officer, so proactively. Sir, in each with officer... All, with all the difficulties, we are trying to do it. Sure. And my director is so proactive. He is, uh, uh, he, he, he is publishing booklets on the quality of drinking water that should be used. Not right. that we are not doing any work. With all the labor, limited resources and the difficulties that we have, and we are all understaffed. Yeah, uh, that's the issue anyway. That is the biggest this thing. With yeah. all this, we are trying to do the best possible things. Yeah. And we want to take good learnings from here. If some other state has a very good uh, uh, practice, we want to take it. If some yeah. industry has a good practice, we want to take it. In fact, uh, at such an engage, we have seen a lot of international, we have a lot of internal uh, national exposure, and we are explaining about a lot of incidents. And not that we have not gone through. Even we have heard of Flexboro or uh, the Savaiso. Everything we have also, we read these incidents. And the Chemical Safety Board incidents, animated videos, we are also in touch with all this. Not that we are not doing all these things. Otherwise, we cannot update ourselves and talk in, this, in such way. Correct. Yeah. Huh? Sure. Uh, the departments are also active. We cannot act reactively. We have to do be our work. Proactive. That's, proactive. That's, that's the main, so, main thing, right? You have to be proactive. For the accident prevention, main is uh, the proactive approach. Correct. In the sense, we have to learn from the incident, then we have to 
yeah, make sure that it doesn't happen again. It's like somebody asked earlier, what are we doing after the incident happened, right? That's Emergencies we can't stop, only we can mitigate. Right? That is what we have to do. Correct. And in the Karnataka, we are doing so many training programs. Each officers are doing a lot of works. Okay. He's commenting like that, I think it is uh, not okay. fair. <laughs> okay. I think uh, we are up, up right? Thank, thanks, everyone, for the opportunity. Thanks to uh, GVMC. And thank you all for patiently listening for me. <laughs> thank you, Chaitanya Garu, for detailed presentation. Thank you very much for uh, valuable question raising and answering, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll break for a team. 10 minutes, we'll gather again by 11.30. After that, there is a session by Mr. Chinnara Garu. He's the inspector of factories. He will clear all your doubts. Uh, for the next one hour. It's a very interesting session. You people are asking some uh, regulations and everything now. So he will explain about those things. Thank you.
సార్ ని కలుస్తారా so welcome back now we will have very brief session by mr p chinnarao garu inspector of factories vishakhapatnam and srikakulam sir i request you to present your presentation sir good morning i am chennara inspector of factories and uh, today i have taken a session regarding we have so many questions from uh, today's uh, participants uh, since uh, four days i am uh, watching and uh, listening so many questions so i have answers of some questions but i can answer and we we have legal framework or uh, already legislation we have is there any requirement of further legislation regarding today uh, uh, after our four days sessions any requirement uh, if it is there it should be addressed to the very good platform here through uh, our N nadm people we can address to the central government moef that is one one thing if it is required or not also we will today i finally i conclude uh, if any preventable incident or accident or disaster if it is not prevented if any incident or accident or disaster preventable incident or accident or disaster if it is not prevented it is not less than a murder it is not less than a murder preventable accident or disaster is not prevented is not less than a murder it is given by the our honorable survey pill radha krishna right my session today is not only the legislation part i am working here since 2013 i have faced directly i involved in the major disasters like hpcl accident occurred on 2013 august 23rd 46 people affected out of 46 28 people died right and uh, 2020 may 7th one more accident occurred it is offsite emergency uh, offsite emergency prone incident occurred i indirectly involved in this uh, uh, incident in investigation and uh, remaining uh, formalities of this department how many people know about the offsite emergency plan here offsite emergency plan right no no please don't raise people from factories department how many people know about offsite emergency plan 
yesterday or before yesterday, day before yesterday somebody raised one question is the sdma i think sdrf they told that whenever we reach the reach that particular incident area we don't have the idea of chemical which is already the by which chemical the people already affected that is the one question is left he is not answered so far we have answer we, how can we we, we could uh, get the information also it is also in, in our le legislation already in framework but it is not addressed it is not uh, uh, informed to the some other it is re really those people those who are working and field also people are not uh, getting that information also. right then on site emergency plan how many people know who will prepare on site emergency plan who will prepare off site emergency plan right the, these are to be addressed first everybody people coming from different areas of uh, country isavapatnam already occurred one accident is major accident lg lg accident how it is occurred everybody know gas gas came out and people affected some died 13 people that's all nobody know how it is occurred one thing and the hpc accident also i will uh, explain you how it is occurred how it is triggered nobody uh, actually interested on it how it is triggered uh, consequence everybody we are paying our interest and in consequence only nobody paying interest in incident trigger where it is triggered here we have two incidents in last february in visakhapatnam and the last month in uh, west godavari these two incidents are same but only one incident is uh, spread across india that is uh, occurred in west godavari 10 people died visakhapatnam also in february one accident occurred same incident the reactor where the 10 people died incident also reactor collapsed and uh, fall down on ground floor in visakhapatnam also in february one accident occurred reactor collapsed and fall down same incidents are same but consequences are different why the consequence is different they here nothing is in ground floor only collapse of reactor nobody injured and nobody nothing happened to anybody they the same reactor collapsed by the time and ground floor are uh, some chemical uh, nitric acid was there then it was given very uh, big explosion and uh, blast that is uh, here factory at concentrate on triggering only not the consequence we prosecute both that factor and this factor also if it is not any anybody not affected here also we prosecute there also we prosecute. So factory concentrated only trigger, not the consequence. Consequence may be based on that situation. It is very dynamic. Based on the situation, the same incident may be accelerated like that. Sometimes major action, major incidents also it will not give any result. Nothing will happen. So nobody knows. But the uh, the people those who are working in the inspectorate will take the take action. But how many people know about? If any industry, suppose any accident, uh, occurrence of accident, who will take action? Police? Police? Anybody know? Who will take action? Pollution? Police? Factors department. Huh? So, here also people don't know who is take action, who will pro uh, prosecute the industries. If it is registered under factory act if any incident or accident uh, the management uh, prosecuted uh, by the department of factories only not pollution or not police also if it is not established any evidence by the department of factories the department of factories will again write a letter to the police department to intervene suppose uh, two people uh, quarreled and uh, uh, injured themselves. It is not covered under factory yet. The inspector of factors definitely informed by the management. The inspector, inspector of factors will again inform to the uh, police. Police will come and investigate like that. That's 
only that side of situations only inspector of actors has no role remaining situations inspector of actors any incident department of actors only will take action right this is one of the clarification you you must know the people who are working in industry suppose chemical disaster industrial disaster my today's my complete uh, whatever i am discussing going to discuss is completely chemical or industrial disasters only not the general nature or natural only chemical or industrial disasters only we have two major incidents here because of process related failures one is both the spcl major accident or uh, lg polymers accident both because of process failure process uh, industrial fail right now uh, i start from uh, the lg polymer because people coming from different areas so they should know how it is occurred the lg incident here we have one tank here this, this is picture group uh, siren is uh, filling we have cooling system up to some extent area only the cooling system siren is coming here into Uh, tank inlet and outlet to the process plant process what is happening here this tank is designed for storage of molasses previously hindustan polymers is a central government uh, psc unit was here they stored molasses here and used it for molasses the styrene was manufactured from the molasses but that time after that they took over of that uh, lg uh, south korea company company they have their own manufacturing units in south korea they start uh, uh, importing the styrene from here styrene is a monomer how many people know storage of any chemical and storage of uh, monomer suppose monomer any monomer is there any difference between the storage of uh, suppose petrol diesel if you store one petrol uh, petrol in the tank if you see tomorrow there will be petrol nothing will be changed right if you store any monomers such monomers if you store it like this if you go tomorrow it will not be a monomer it will be polymer it will be polymer means the tank itself act as a reactor not the tank we have to understand it is not at all tank it is a reactor so we have to protect we have to cool we have to keep the the poly monomer as it should not be converted into polymer so we have to some external controls we require that controls are cooling you know everybody that is should not be more than 26 km you you know in water also we know the dissolved oxygen everybody know the the water fish the living in the because of dissolved oxygen like that we have dissolved oxygen in monomer also because of dissolved oxygen automatically the monomer gets polymerized every time some vapors are coming here accumulation occur in top of the this roof after accumulation of after getting some mass it will again fall into the this material every time there is a sampling system every day they have to take sample system every time they are taking sample sometimes they find so polymer content more than the required here also so many times every day they are taking here sometimes more content uh, they find more, found was more content uh, uh, actually that is uh, that parameter more than the minimum so these people are what they thought by that this is the fall of this accumulated by gravity into the this one that is why the content of the polymer increase they thought like that here in may 7th or before two three days also the uh, the content is uh, the parameter is more than 400 times required required uh, minimum what is there is a minimum requirement uh, the safe safe uh, polymer polymer is polymer content is there two three days. they thought that 
it was because of the fall of the polymerized content into the uh, monomer like that they uh, and particularly they they concluded like that they left like that only that what happened here only one temperature probe here there is no temperature probes in top because it was designed for molasses no change management occurred that time change management they have not taken any additional precautions during the conversion of this molasses tank to for storage of monomer here here no temperature probe here only one temperature probe it is giving some uh, this one uh, reading but uh, in general case while the unit running of the during running of the unit every day 300 tons in and 300 tons out outlet so for process every day going suppose any polymer containing uh, polymer content is there suppose additional suppose uh, to reduce the dissolved oxygen some inhibitors are put into the this one the inhib inhibitors take care of reduce the dissolved oxygen and okay, retard the uh, polymerization also right here also they are using inhibitors but there is no uh, uh, dissolved oxygen but it was started uh, a further uh, uh, polymerization here uh, general case the every day 300 tons coming and going coming going if it is polymer poly suppose any content of poly polymer in this uh, material also it goes to process it goes to process so no problem here 40 days almost uh, stopped this one the uh, people also uh, working people also restricted for 40 people or 30 people for uh, working only one cooling system refrigeration system is there the system is uh, continuously uh, the system is uh, working the people are working in general shift only not the night shift so they stopped 530 the cooling system as usual it is uh, continuously this was started this was started the uh, polymerization started night on uh, fine morning it was uh, happened uh, this uh, there is a valve here pressure reducing valve is there vent vent is there through vent it was spread uh, along the wind direction that that time what was the wind prevailed the direction that direction it was spread the incident occurred like this here only because of they, they the, the alarm already given but it was misled it was misled that is why they left for one day again it was uh, acceler accelerated this uh, everything uh, this uh, after that uh, everybody know what happened this is the uh, incident occur right uh, he, here anybody have questions uh, expansion ratio i think uh, uh, 900 times, I think. Oh, no, no, no. Here, it is an exothermic reaction. It is an exothermic reaction. Once initiated, the initially started, na, the temperature raised by the first polymerization, that temperature accelerates the next particle to polymerize. Like that, the same reaction will continue because of exothermic. The temperature automatically raise inside and again all the particles of the adjacent particles will be uh, polymerized. Yes, yes, yes. No, no, not the expression. This is everybody calling as one thing, uh, gas. All are calling as LG polymer gas leak, not it is vapor. It should not being technical people, you should not uh, uh, quote it as a gas, it is a vapor. The vapor, they have some controls, pressure controls. Their set point is there. After set point of that pressure, it will pop up. After set pressure, it, it will pop up. Like that, the entire material uh, started uh, gushing out uh, and uh, 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 traveled along the windy direction. Uh, this is the uh, incident occurred. No, no. First, filled the gap. Suppose fifteen percent gap is there. Everybody know there is. Every, we have to keep fifteen percent gap for vapors. There is a vapor space. After filling up that vapor 
space then uh, further uh, reaction will uh, increase the vapor then pressurize then uh, opening up the pressure relief valve that is the yes here yes vapor it is only vapor you don't call it as gas yes vapor only monomer when gets converted through exothermic reaction becomes polymer and it uh, takes the form of a vapor and vapor is being lighter they no 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 monomer is reactive polymer is it is neutral once polymerized converted no, as a polymer more reactive yeah, it is not more reactive it's very difficult during to keep them as a monomer during conversion of monomer to polymer only this uh, temperature uh, raises the raising of temperature of one reaction accelerate the another reaction yes yes here uh, next one more uh, major accident I, i if you don't have any doubts then i'll go to another uh, incident yes here one more accident also people should know because you you, uh, you are coming from different parts that is major accident for 28 people died in uh, in uh, uh, hp sir here one cooling tower is there here one cooling tower is there here five chambers are here four chambers already constructed and uh, one pipeline uh, here also one more cooling tower old one is there it is collapsed because uh, due to hudhud during hudhud everywhere hudhud is the major sorry Uh, not a hood. Two hundred days there is no hood. Here a hood. Sorry, cyclone is the uh, main. The corona is here. Here the entire uh, the cooling system we have. You know, the evaporation process. The system is the cooling tower. The tower collapsed. Here open, completely open. It is open to air. This tank. The new pipeline, old pipeline here. New pipeline. It is run up to here. and uh, here they are tapping uh, different uh, cooling tower right here one valve is here for a new it is new one it is old one the gap between this valve and this one here process washed water is going inside and condensers uh, there is so, so many kind of cdu do you know cdu yesterday they told cdu crude distillation unit crude distillation unit completely all the, the it is condensers only through condensers uh, water is coming uh, and cooling and uh, go to the back to the process here there is a gap between this and this one uh, almost 13 meters gap is there 800 mm uh, pipe the in, in the process water the cooling water somewhere in uh, different uh, uh, condenser some leak was there small small leaks were there in that hydrocarbons are there these hydrocarbons are accumulated here water is coming here why here accumulated this is pipeline they just elevated like that this is pipeline this just elevated like that here wall you know here diversion you know the vapors uh, any vapor that is uh, uh, less denser than the water that is why he, because of this uh, this uh, elevated pipe here all the vapors are accumulated here the accumulation of vapors that is that up, up to what pressure it will be accumulated you know suppose here suppose 10 kg pressure for example here water the vapor also up to 10 kg is pressure it will accumulate the vapor accumulate up to 10 kg additional accumulation is not occurred because the pressure is balanced here further additional any hydrocarbons goes here they instantly they go to going to this tank and go to atmosphere not a problem here this accumulation 10 kg pressure or 9 kg pressure here it is there by the time they started uh, this cooling tower this one three four high chambers this is started here remaining also construction here some works uh, like uh, gas cutting welding these are all doing in this uh, pe people are doing here nearby 
and inside the inside also some decking was suppose the uh, scaffolding work also going on remaining remaining chamber right here by the time uh, for trial purpose uh, they open the water wall here first uh, the vapor comes here and uh, propagate up to the, the welding area and the gas cutting area from here uh, fire uh, goes back and the entire uh, total uh, system total uh, the system completely blasted collapsed this was uh, occurred here this is the triggering of this incident right how the incidents are uh, happen only i am trying to tell if there any doubts uh, I, i can right i will go further after bhopal incident we have one legislation do you know what is the legislation 2086 one, one more one legislation was occurred yes environmental protection act 1986 Environmental Protection Act, 1986, right? Right here for mitigation and industrial. For, this is uh, for industrial. Uh, this one we have two more acts and rules. Uh, government frame. One is MS IXC manufacture, storage, storage import. of hazardous chemicals act 1989 again amended in 2000 2000 it was amended this one what this act i will tell you the next chemical accident emergency planning preparedness and response uh, rules 1996 1996 these two acts enacted the role of the two acts is here after bopal incident only here uh, five or six uh, uh, departments notified as inspectors for msi rules here controller of explosives uh, pollution fact chief inspector of uh, factories and uh, revenue people like that and uh, uh, nuclear uh, nuclear atomic uh, energy these uh, all chief inspectors are notified as inspectors under this act what this act is telling this act given some uh, schedule list of chemicals the list of chemicals now how can we categorize the major accident hazardous factory do you know anybody know the factory suppose we have 10 factories here among uh, among 10 factories one factory may be called as a mah fact how it is called you know anybody inventory then inventory then ha ah, threshold inventory inventory threshold they have every we have threshold is there anywhere ha ah? that is there that is there. apart from that this is this, the quantity sir is telling is it is only quantity based on quantity there is a certain quantity if you storage of uh, the quantity beyond more than that quantity it is called as a major hazardous uh, major accident hazardous factor then two more parameters class a class b flammability this is only flammable what we are telling is flammable two more is lethal dose and lethal concentration also some some chemicals having lethal dose and right? that dose suppose some dose it is tested on rats uh, lc50 lc ld50 like that if it is exceeding of that dose uh, any factory containing uh, this type of chemicals uh, lethal dose lethal act, uh, le lethal concentration uh, uh, this one suppose toxic these are all also we named it as mh factory not only fire prone or flammability here toxicity also we we have categorized in 2000 uh, 2000 it was amended right here classification of that uh, uh, chemicals uh, are here uh, done here in this act 
we have listed complete uh, 600 above odd chemicals listed for each chemical having that quantity in the table the exceedance of the quantity is a mh factory if it is below not an mh factory other uh, uh, the code of practice we have to do every here here all the officer suppose uh, chief inspectors are notified under factory act means suppose any accident occurred in industry, inspector of factories will take action. Suppose accident occurred in outside the factory, pollution control people are uh, remain. Suppose if it is an atomic establishment, so atomic energy that controller is there, na, he will take action. Suppose uh, explosive, if it is explosive outside, controller of explosive will take action. Like that, based on the uh, jurisdiction, based on the jurisdiction, the inspectors will take action. Right. This is the M MS ICE rule here, chemical accidents rule. Chemical accidents rules, uh, just I asked uh, somebody, what is the offsite emergency plan? It is completely, this legislation is completely proactive. Proactive legislation towards industrial emergency. To mitigate industrial emergencies, it is proactive, uh, this legislation. What we are telling DM Act, it is reactive. Reactive. This is reactive legislation. But there is a gap between linkage of this one. What the gap we will tell here? Uh, chemical accident, emergency planning, preparedness, and response act rules 19. It is a central rule, not state rule, central rule. Right. Here we have any MH factory, we have on-site emergency plan and off-site emergency plan. On-site emergency plan, who prepare on-site emergency plan, who prepare off-site emergency plan? Do you know anybody? Other than inspectors, factory inspectors. Right. Here, on-site emergency plan, suppose if, if it is notified the MH factory as a major accident hazardous factory, the on-site emergency plan should be prepared by the Factory management only. They have their own plan to mitigate the emergencies. It should be prepared by the management of that factory. Right? On site. Off site emergency plan. Off site emergency plan prepared by the district administration. It is not at all related to the individual industries. As a whole, industry as a whole, we have to prepare one plan that is off site emergency plan. Who are the members in the this plan, how it is related, what is the further group, is there any group? Here, we have, for industrial emergency mitigation, we have central crisis group, central crisis group, state crisis group, district crisis group, and local crisis group. Anybody know about this, these groups? These are all since 1980, uh, 1989 and 1996. Do you know anybody? No, no, no. Simply, it's named as a crisis group. That's all. The act named as a crisis group only. Here, central crisis group, state crisis group, district crisis group, and local crisis group. Here, central crisis group. Secretary, MOEF, is chairperson. Secretary of MOEF is chairperson, right? Here, state crisis group, chief secretary, chief secretary of state is chairperson, CS. Here, district crisis group, anyway, district director, everybody knows, chairman. Here, local crisis group, RDO, R, some states, uh, Sub collector, some states we uh, sub collect. These are the groups sir, already. Sir, one the second. Legal... Sir, it is a state crisis management committee. Maybe, maybe. Call... No, maybe. nomenclature is maybe in, call it as, as per law. Say, I think name like is, that. Yes. What I am telling, what is in our legal framework only, I am trying to. Ah, okay, inform. okay, 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 sir. Right? Here, state crisis group, secretary, MOEF. Here, Chief Secretary of all state, 
dear district uh, district collector dear rdo here offsite emergency plan prepared by the district collectors offsite emergency plan prepared by the district who are the members here in yeah, dcg who are the members dcg here dcg first inspector of factories who is heading the district dgkesh may be changed who is heading the district he is the uh, chairman is district collector uh, member secretary member secretary is inspector of factories here who is uh, heading the district right next pollution control board fire revenue road and buildings and uh, medical district medical dm and ho medical and uh, transport police all are all line departments of the district all line departments nobody left here nobody left here all line departments are members in this committee this committee every 45 days they have to meet this committee every 45 days they have to meet and discuss about even small incidents to accident or disaster only review the district director review along with this committee all the incidents whatever industrial district uh, disasters or uh, small incident everything where uh, the incidents are occurred in the mh factories this committee uh, they have to sit every 45 days right and one more they have to conduct off site mock drill every year they have to conduct off site mock drill every year off site mock drill matlab means this is a awareness program maybe this off site mock drill every year conducting of off site mock drill every year the public definitely they will come to aware about the factory what is going on what are the chemicals being used in this factory these are all they come to know this is already in our legal system everything is here but implementation how far we, it is being implemented we we have to think all all of us here we have to think this offsite amendment and one more one awareness program for each factory conduct every year public awareness program madam one or two this is it. this is one this is one awareness program in the public 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 means here public means what is the public suppose we have offsite emergency plan already in our hand for every factory the this dispersal model suppose here factory suppose here uh, this is the affected zone from some, some nine months three months affected zone may be he this like that we have already the document in our hand based on this affected zones we have to conduct awareness programs in the in this area this is already in the act right every year now come to the local crisis group lcg the lcg here here also inspectors are in the district two two or more inspectors are every district are there uh the inspector who is heading the uh, district one more sub, sub inspector may be uh, working in uh, his uh, in uh, under suppose here uh, andhra pradesh deputy chief inspector is heading the district inspector of factories are doing clusters uh, inspecting cluster suppose suppose in visaya part two clusters are there one is urban and rural if is uh, the the rdos of the, all the rdos suppose we have four rdos we have to uh, prepare four lcgs if you have only rd one rdo we have to prepare one lcg group in in this group all the industries are members first all the industries are members suppose we have 20 industry here these industries are members in this group first second the community leader the community leader suppose this is one here one village is here some panchayat pradhan is here panchayat pradhan he is the member in this group he is the member in this group the panchayat pradhan 
suppose the affected zone suppose 10 villages said all the 10 villages represented should be members right again ngos why ngos required suppose any incident occurred ngos also mobilization of any resources or sudden requirements maybe suppose a major accident major disaster started ngos they have already resources they start the, uh, uh, doing work there for uh, mitigation or this uh, rescue so ngos two ngos required here in this group two ngos village pradhan sir uh, so, uh, the affected zones uh, how many uh, villages are there all the people all the representative of local government or our members here village pradhan here and uh, ngos and uh, social worker two social workers are members in this group and doctor who are the doctors occupational health those who are dealing the occupational safety and health doctors also members here and uh, one news print print media one representative from the print media print media one represent this is the group so off site on site lcg and uh, district crisis group now here lcg one one month monthly lcg conduct uh, awareness program uh, meeting every month review the incidents everything every month and lcg conduct drills mock drills twice in year twice in year and then twice in year two mock drills the lcg group should conduct next awareness programs also same lcg one awareness program for each factory every year these are all the legislation prevailing here now the district crisis group monthly uh, 45 days they are uh, sitting here monthly sitting here 45 days uh, state crisis group yearly and central crisis group uh, based on their uh, requirement period city is there no no period city based on the uh, mof uh, their uh, requirement their uh, priorities based on their priorities they will uh, sit this is the legislation behind now come to your question what you have told one gap is here uh, dm act uh, dm act framed in 2005 but uh, the ndrf sdrf not included in this group in this group these groups so these are all not included but after incident occurred uh, occurrence of incident in lg polymers we in visakhapatnam included ndrf as a member right yes yes we included based on our experience lg incident even though the ndrf is not member in uh, e, in this uh, framework but ndr we have taken ndrf as a member in district crisis group after occurrence of lg polymer recently taken but that should be amended so in this the uh, already we have told na uh, in the local crisis group and district crisis group ndrf should be a member so dm act come after the legislation of the chemical accident act so anyway we started doing this but uh, in, in uh, national level it is also one of the requirement all the uh, rescue force should be members in this group regarding industrial emergency to meet industrial emergencies fire department already in this fire department in dcg already fire department, all line departments are there here under of is uh, uh, this new uh, dm act after enforcement of dm act uh, these people are not added uh, the, the chemical accident uh, rules should be uh, anyway we have to amend so adding up these people right uh, then then after uh, include of your uh, uh, the, anyway you will come to know during uh, this meetings every year or every month uh, meeting uh, what is chemical in this then your represent suppose your boss is representing the meeting definitely he will know what is chemical in this immediately he, you, he guides you uh, where is the where is, uh, what is happening there what type of uh, pp you have to use before uh, going to the in incident right uh, this is the one area uh, your, i think uh, your question 
here one more uh, uh, this one uh, we have um, it is uh, our side we are all from all are from government side any uh, outside government here other than government oh ngo also right ngo here any gvmc people are here gvmc right here where during lg polymers incident where we have missed legislation lc dcg every time we are doing whenever we send letters to the suppose for gvmc the low level people are representing we minute in that these are all locations habitations that that should not be approved we have already raised so many times during meetings but lower level people are coming but if you send the minutes the minutes nobody review or implement this is the gap already occurred all this is a public document sir public document public document public document is it is available in your uh, no no it is available in any government website 96 na nay you are talking about all this right it's a good thing that you have initiated this yes but i like to know whether all this available for in the public domain yeah it is there it is not there it not is published it is gazetted yes it is ah no 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 nay nice, sir no, it is in, i'll tell you it uh, is not there in public document one thing and no, no, what no. you mentioned no on site document no, means no, no, one it is one. registered and recorded yeah, in yeah. our it is not available in the public do they don't put it in the public document yes. one and this on site management which the uh, factory has to do it no they have to submit it to the district disaster management authority yes fine that is not happening one and uh, they don't publish this on site uh, disaster no, not happening plan. you don't uh, finally confirm not happening yeah, it, it is, is happening in but it is happening we have on site emergency plans management should conduct every 3 months they have to do four four drills per year every factory should conduct on site emergency plan execution of on site emergency plan every uh, four times in a year that should be again uh, again uh, here uh, uh, reviewed at lcg because the member in the industry sir members in lcg in lcg that should be again uh, converted right uh, uh, these are all the right so uh, is whether all these documents are there in the public domain normally it is not there you didn't understand the question okay uh, there should there is a web play, website right district disaster management authority website is there ah uh, there is a crisis manity uh, management group is there state uh, no agenda proceedings have to be published nice except your personal data i'll tell you except your except your family data and uh, 
all your salary details has to be published by RTI Act, and whatever legally you're holding, that has to be published, and whatever uh, this one. Apart from that, all document has to be published as per RTI Act 2005, Section 401A to 401A B. It will give you all the details of agenda, proceedings, meetings, what is the action taken before, what is the action to be done, all that has to come on the poll. As sir was uh, in the opening remarks, he was mentioning that uh, that is what is required. Normally, it is not disclosed. That is what is there. I even reporting of incidents. I was I have studied this labor courts, but once you put that in total total, I think so. All this what we are talking now, it will be it will come down. That is what I felt. When the parliament already enacted, we can't say it, we can't enforce.
okay kindly one by one Hello everyone. My name is Anjali Gandotra. I am from State Administrative Services. Uh, <laughs> Hello everyone. My name is Anjali Gandotra. I am from State Administrative Services, JKS 2019 batch, and I am working as Under Secretary to the Government Department of Disaster Management, Relief, Rehabilitation, and Reconstruction, and I am from Jammu and Kashmir. Hello everyone. Uh, I am a JKS officer from 2004 batch, and uh, my name is Devendra Singh Bhau. I am presently I am holding a post of Deputy Commissioner in the Relief and Rehabilitation Department. I am also from Jammu and Kashmir. Very good afternoon all. I am Robin Castro. I am a District Fire Officer from Tamil Nadu Fire and Rescue Services. I am from 2019 uh, Group One, Tamil Nadu Public Service Commission Group One batch. Thank you. Good afternoon all. Uh, my name is Mano Prasanna. I am a district fire officer, Tanjavu district from Tamil Nadu. I am a 2019 batch uh, state group one services. Thank you. Good afternoon all. I am Srini Vasan, working as safety director, industrial safety and health, uh, made to dam, which is situated in River Kaveri. And uh, I am uh, passing in combined engineering service exam from state of Tamil Nadu. Good afternoon to all. Uh, myself, uh, Iswar Rao Gade from CRPF to deputation to NDRF 2020, uh, present working at NDRF Regional Response Center, Visayatpat. Good afternoon. I am Chenna Rao, Inspector of Factories, uh, here as in charge Visayatpat no? and uh, Sirka Kol neighboring district actually. Uh, I selected uh, as Inspector of Factories uh, from State Services, APPSC, uh, Public Service Commission crew. Now I am, since uh, five years I am working here. Right. I am Jay Kumar, Joint Director of Industrial Safety and Health from uh, Chennai. Um, basically, our department is labor department, like factory inspector of uh, like other place. Uh, good afternoon. I think so. Everybody knows my name. I am Raghu. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry if I have... Uh, because uh, uh, I have learned a lot many things. Because our sir is here, I have learned a lot many things uh, when I came to this program. My intention was to study that uh, resilience... Uh, what is this? Uh, they have a special unit in urban local body, GVMC, that we are trying to put it in our uh, urban local body in Bangalore. That is one reason why I came for this program. One. And one, uh, one thing is, uh, uh, BBA, we have an act which has come into force in Bangalore city that is called BBNP Act 2020. So there we have introduced disaster management as one, uh, one uh, chapter and we have scaled it down to the ward level. So at the ward, we have made the government to make a rule and uh, that is uh, Ward Committee Rules 2016. In that, uh, Section 8 gives the power to the ward committee to establish a ward disaster management cell. So I am associated in establishing this ward disaster management at the, at the ward level. But unfortunately, our uh, local council got dissolved in 20, uh, 2019 September. Until today, there no election is happening. No council is working in our urban uh, Mahanagara Palika. And recently, yesterday, the government gave a judgment. Maybe once the council comes in, we'll be doing. And we are very associated with the NDRF, SDRF, fire and uh, emergency services. And we do a lot of this, uh, what is called... Uh, uh, yeah, practical program, disaster management program, all this. I was yesterday talking about IRS. So we are we are trying to put this IRS in all this uh, disaster management uh, camps, what this NSS does, National uh, Saving Scheme, they organize. Then Red Cross volunteers, they use this, uh, we put that. And uh, scouts and guides, then uh, what you call NSS, NCC. So it's a mandate in uh, national policy, it's a mandate to have all this uh, this one. So that is how I'm associated. But I have also passed my TOT from sir uh, from uh, sir, uh, NIDM, and I finished my TOT in IRS. And I think so this is one more TOT I'm going to get, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon to all. Uh, my name is Deepak Chauhan. I'm, I'm uh, uh, as a deputy collector posted in uh, Burhanpur district, uh, Madhya Pradesh, and uh, I'm. Uh, as a OIC and nodal officer, also for relief, and uh, presently uh, working. Uh, 
nothing nothing <laughs> uh state uh, madhya pradesh state service uh, uh, services 2017 batch thank you aap sabhi ko namaskar uh, i am manoj shankpal i am working as a district manager in public service management department uh, with a district administration burhanpur hello everyone i am ramlal panchore personal assistant to collector and district magistrate burhanpur from mp Hello everyone I am Bhupen Chopra uh, I am supply officer under the food and civil supply department I am from MP Brunpur uh, Good afternoon my name is Sudhakar inspector of activities for Vishakhapatnam uh, certain part of the area and uh, uh, Yeah my name is Sudhakar inspector of activities uh, Vishakhapatnam one circle and I have been doing this uh, you know joined as a inspector of activities training in the year 2018 uh, still continuing in the Vishakhapatnam thank you Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dilip Kumar. I am working in industry industry department. I have recruited through APPSC in 2013. Right now, I am working as district industry promotion officer in Srikakulam district, Andhra Pradesh. Good afternoon, everybody. Myself, Dr. Ramani Mangaraju. I am working as a ward scientist and environment secretary in the JVMC. Thank you. My name is G. C. Nawazra, working at uh, Primary Health Center, Alcoota, Vijayanagar District. My category is M. P. H. O. Multi-Purpose Health Extension Officer. Good afternoon to all. My name is V. A. Appala Charilu. I am coming from Medical and Health Department, Multi-Purpose Health Extension Officer, Vijayanagar District, A. P. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Suresh, Deputy Chief Inspector of Factories, Kai Canada. I was selected as Inspector of Factories in 2010 by the Public Service Commission, Andhra Pradesh. Thank you. Myself, Kola Ellaro, present working as a Ward Secretary, Sanitation Secretary, and Sanitation Environment Secretary. Good afternoon, all. My name is Baskar Ramesh. I am working as Ward Sanitation Secretary, 39th Ward, GVMC. Good afternoon, all. I'm working at. Uh, my name is Bhavani. I'm working as Ward Sanitation and Environment Secretary in GVM. Thank you. Good afternoon, all. I am Dr. Geeta. I am PhD in Micro uh, Environmental Science and PDF in Microbiology. Thank you for the GVMC involving this uh, uh, seminar. We are awareness to. what are the impacts to the public and uh, all impacts to our ward sanitation secretaries always help to the uh, public uh, not only sanitation this uh, uh, risk management also thank you very much sir myself shrikan i am from gmc uh, working as a ward sanitation and environmental secretary and i was so thankful to everyone for giving us a great Uh, knowledge regarding the fire safety and we are so thankful to gmc for uh, sitting with all a uh, uh, great people who are here thank you so much Hi to all. I am Anshadi Shreddy from Department of Andhra University, Department of Environmental Science. I completed my PhD in Andhra University. Good afternoon to one and all. Myself Sai Kiran. I am pursuing my post graduates in Environmental Engineering and Management at Jawaharlal Nehru Technological University, Kolkata. I am here doing my major project research for research for Kandar. Sri Dr. Yan Srinivas Rajmani Yadu. So thank you for uh, GVMC for this great opportunity to meet a knowledgeable research persons and other delegates. Thank you. Hi all, I am Santosh from Ward Secretary. Uh, I am working as Ward Sanitation and Environment Secretary in GVMC. Thank you. 
Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jansi Rani, working as Watts Sanitation and Environment Secretary. Thanks. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Kanna Babu, uh, Virtual GIS Analyst, worked for uh, Forest Department and uh, Election Department in all. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm P. Rakesh Verma, working as Watts Sanitation and Environment Secretary, and I completed my MSc Microbiology in Andhra University. I have interest in disaster management course or life sciences. Thanks for GVMC for giving this opportunity. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Vankitesh Prasad. I'm working as Sanitation and Environment Secretary in GVMC. Good afternoon, all. My name is Ravi Shripuram, Dash and RF, Vishak Patum Sai Balankartam. Sauka Namaskara, my name is Salam, 10th and RF, RRC. Very good, Jay Shankar Ra. My mother for CRPF, now still uh, deputation service, 10th battalion in NDR, subunit regional response center from Vishak Patnam. Good afternoon, all of you. My name is B.B. Naidu, NDR of Constable General Duty, still now RRC, Vishak Patnam. Good afternoon to all. My name is uh, Adiridi from NDRF, present. Uh, I'm performing Lysine of Pacific on RRC Vishakapatna for NDRF. Good afternoon to everyone. My name is Satinarana, Inspector of 10th NDRF, Vijayawada. I'm, I am from Andhra Pradesh. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. It should have been happened at the first day itself, but uh, unfortunately, we are introducing ourselves at the last day. Uh, but anyway, I am Sridhanya Suresh IAS. I am 2019 uh, Indian Administrative Service Officer. I am held from Kerala. Presently, I am working as Sub Collector and Sub Division Magistrate Pirindalmanna Malappuram in Kerala. Uh, in case of Kerala, actually, disaster management is actually very well in place. We have district emergency control rooms. Then each subdivision, there is subdivision level taluk means emergency control room. And in taluk level, there is taluk emergency operating center. And all these centers are coordinating very well at the time of incidents. And in addition to that, we have each village, we have village level incidents response team where village officers are heading and the, all the civil defense volunteers and the local body members are the members of this committee. So whatever the incident happens at the local level, this immediate response team will immediately inform to the taluk level emergency operating center. From there, the council that will take place, he is the incident commander at the taluk level. Then all the uh, emergency coordination will happen at the TUC. They will inform to the DOC. And from DUC, it will go to the state level. And uh, finally, at the district level, obviously, district collector is chairing, chairing the district level uh, emergency operating center. And when come to the section, I would like to add two, three things. Some of the sections were really good. Like first, Ramana Rao sir section and the toxicology section and the last yesterday's NDRF section. These sessions were actually really good as an administrator and as an Indian, I think, most of the people must have felt the same, but some of the sections were not up to the mark. It, it will happen in every trainings. Uh, we can't expect every sections at the same, same standard. Some sections will be there where we have faced some, uh, we will face some slagging, but some sessions were really important. And uh, I hope GVMC uh, will take this forward and uh, I hope more training sessions will happen in across the India and I hope I will meet uh, some of you in some other parts of the country and all the very best for everyone. Thank you. Hello. Hello everyone. My name is Meher Gupta. I am from Jammu and Kashmir Administrative Service 2015 batch. Presently working as accounts officer in relief and rehabilitation department. Thank you. Good afternoon. I am Partha Sarthi from the state of Karnataka. Uh, I represent the Department of Industrial uh, Factories, Boilers, Industrial Safety and Health in Karnataka. Um, I am presently working as Joint Director of Factories, Mysore region. And uh, thank you for this wonderful program. As Madam was mentioning, uh, some of the sessions were really good. Uh, we had a very good learning experience. Uh, 
uh, especially we, there were a lot of misconceptions uh, in our minds about the disaster management aspect. Uh, there are a lot of unlearning also has happened on our side. Uh, Surya Prakash sir and Harihar Kumar, uh, all of you have helped, uh, helped us in uh, gaining uh, knowledge in a very good way, especially the sessions as Madam was mentioning, the toxicology session, we learnt a lot. Yesterday's NDRF uh, session, already Karnataka is very much involved with the NDRF. Uh, we involve them in the mock drills. Only uh, two or three districts are involving them. We will ensure that in future all the other districts also get in touch with NDRF so that we can work more effectively. Because the NDRF presence as we came to know yesterday, it helps us in uh, the public awareness programs. Reaching out to the community on our own as officers is very difficult. Probably with people in uniform, uh, it is very easy to reach out to the public and uh, educate them. This, uh, especially this community awareness or public awareness has really been a challenge for the department. Uh, this program has helped us how to carry it forward. And we had our doubts about the local crisis group also. Uh, generally, we used to have a district crisis group uh, and lo local crisis group, we used to have it only in uh, talukas which were far away from the uh, district. Uh, but recently, in one of the meetings, we were told that even the district needs, a, the local taluk at the district level also needs a local crisis group. But uh, it was a good learning from Jina Rao that uh, uh, the local crisis groups are working very effectively in uh, Andhra Pradesh. Uh, we would also like to share more information with you, how we can uh, improve the effectiveness of the local functioning of the local crisis groups. Uh, overall, uh, it was a very good learning experience. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. A very good afternoon to all of you. I am Dr. Shamli Singh, working as a faculty and coordinator for Center for Environment and Climate Change at Indian Institute of Public Administration, New Delhi. And as has been said by, by my co-participants, this is my personal belief. All sessions were very good. It depends on the trainee, how do you want to take them? You can always leave aside a few concepts which you feel they were not good. If you feel something was very good, imbibe it to the fullest. And I look forward to welcoming all of you to IIPA to our different capacity building programs. Thank you so much. Chinmayi Torugal, Assistant Director of Factories, Department of Factories, Boilers, Industrial Safety and Health from Karnataka. Uh, I would like to thank all for this wonderful training session. Thank you very much. Good afternoon to all. I am Pratap from Karnataka, Department of Factories, Boiler, Industrial Safety and Health. I am working as a Senior Assistant Director of Factories. From last five years, I am working in the department. This program went in a good way. All the session, sessions were uh, very informative and we learnt a lot. It's our duty to carry all these lessons to our workplace and we have to inculcate in the workplace. That is our uh, duty. And also the hospitality, you know, the food and on time the uh, sessions, everything it went in a good way. I hope this will continue in uh, other uh, states also. We expect more training programs uh, all over the country. So with this, I conclude. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. I am Dr. Murali Mohan. I am a retired civil surgeon epidemiologist from AP Medical and Health Services. Uh, till uh, April 5th of uh, 2022, I was working as an nodal officer for uh, COVID control in Vishakhapatnam district. Thank you. Good afternoon all. I'm Prakash Kumar from Indian Red Cross Society, Andhra Pradesh State Branch. I'm very happy to hear. So it is very helpful to me to train volunteers. So regarding industrial disasters. Thank you all. Good afternoon to everyone. My name is Chandra Shekhar. I am appointed as a Reserve Inspector AP Special Police. Now I am working as a Inspector AP SDRF on dictation. I am very thankful to all and uh, I am uh, such a uh, great experience given by MIDM, uh, also uh, GVMC. 
सर आप सबको यही हम रिक्वेस्ट करता हमको एक ग्रुप क्रिएट किया था वो ग्रुप में सब लोग एक्टिव रहने से वो सीनियर अफसर जो है उसका एक्सपीरियंस हमको शेयर होगा ऐसी जो एक ग्रुप हुआ था एक ग्रुप में सब एक्टिव रहने के लिए हमारा रिक्वेस्ट कर रहा है सर क्योंकि सबका सीनियर अफसर है हमको उसका एक्सपीरियंस उसका जो कुछ डेली अपडेट होता वो हमको क्या क्या उसका उपयोग होगा उसका प्लीज रिक्वेस्ट माई सेल्फ एस डी आर अफसर यही है कि सब इसमें है सीनियर अफसर जूनियर अफसर सबको एक्टिव रहने के लिए बोला सर थैंक यू वेरी मच सर Good afternoon to all. This is Vankatesh Valpelli, Reza Sabal Inspector in Andhra Pradesh, present deputation in SDRF, sir. Thank you, dear sir. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Gopi Krishna. I am from AP State Disaster Response and Fire Services Department, working as Assistant District Fire Officer, recruited as Station Fire Officer in 2009. Thank you. Good afternoon to everybody. This is Simha Chalam, Assistant District Fire Officer from AP State Disaster Response and Fire Service Department. Thanks to NIDM and JVMs to give to give this opportunity and to meet all these like good people. Thank you. Good afternoon to all. My name is Rajesh. I am working as a Ward Secretary in JVMC. Uh, first of all. I am thanks to Madam. In this case, Madam Gar Kon Vishal Chaparu. If you want to ask any particular answer, you can. Chapter style or this kind of matter, me, this meeting is useful on Sunday. Kabati, under one kind of chapter style, or either the secretary is going to under one chunk Kabati. You under one kind of chapter style, ward level, or particular work level, Koda, the information under one kind of system. Along with all that, the group Koda create just the income on Sunday. And once again, thanks to JVMC and NIDM team. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Dr. I C N Raju, free by India from Vishakhapatnam. Good afternoon, all officers. My name is B Y V Ramana, working at the A P S D R team from Mizoram. Good afternoon, all of you. My name is V Ganapati, assistant assistant sub inspector of police. Uh, I am working in uh, A P S D R F. In Vishal Patnam, small request, sir. All departments are giving. Thank you very much, sir. Chala Vishal, Telin Vishal, Kota Mahendra, Telin Bachchan, sir. Upuru national level lo NDRF executive lo yevadanga pal gunto mdo. Man state level lo APS sir Kota adhe duty staff mo sir. Man staff side dete police department lo ujjan jasno meo. Maria adhe yevadanga e risk ujjan gor jasno sir. Ma ke idhar naoka sunte. डिजास्टर एडप मेनेज रिक्वेस्ट मैं एपीएसटीआर सपरेट एपीएसटीआर उद्योग अवकाश कल थैंक यू वेरी मच गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल ऑफ यू मै नेम इज यंग गणेश कुमार वर्किंग एपी डिजास्टर अंड फैर सर्वीस लीडिंग फैर मैं Good afternoon, sir. I am Santosh Kumar from AP Fire Service, senior leading fireman. Thank you. Good afternoon. I am K Hipsiba, working as San Word Sanitation Environment Secretary in GVMC. Thanks to the presentations of various departments. Thanks to GVMC. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Poorna Chandra Shekhar. I am working as Ward Sanitation Environment Secretary, GVMC. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Divya, working as Ward Sanitation Environment Secretary, AP State Government, GVMC. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Tarini. I am working as Ward Sanitation and Environment Secretary, GVMC. I am K Balaj Raghav, working as Environment and Sanitation Secretary. From GMC Department of Public Health, and I'm also a Swachh Bharat Mission Coordinator for Jyoti GMC. Good afternoon, sir. My name is G. Arigun, sir. 
APS DRF, sir, all officers, the four days importance. Chala mukiman visyalu maaku English language telugu na kunchun kunchun match ko naan sir. Bilwan point la all officers. The four, the five days, chala happy sir. All graduate officers, I S officers, so the five days uh, travel chain nandu ko chala thanks sir. Good afternoon to all officials and my colleagues. Myself is Raj Kumar Reddy. I am working as head constable in uh, APS DRF team. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Kona Chutra, police constable in 2013 batch and deputation to SDRF in 2016. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, all, sir. I am um, Ravi Shankar, sir. I am working in uh, APS DRF team. Sir. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Murali, coming to coming from 16th Battalion, Vesak Patna. Good afternoon, all. My name is JN Reddy. I am working ABS DRA. Good afternoon, sir. I am K. Lakshman Rao, uh, working uh, APS DRA team, sir. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Madan Mohan, working as a APS DRA. System good afternoon, APSP. Good afternoon, Honor. My name is Ankapil Santosh Kumar. I am 2011 batch constable and now dictation to SDRF, sir. Thank you, one and all, sir. Maku Ani Adamated to Chalabache Peru. He classes my do Obia Porte, sir. Meet me, my SDRF team to me meet me Panchukoni Valakoda, Ekadena Jerge, me Chabdan Maku, Chala Silver Kelpincher, sir. And also, uh, such a honor person, sir. There, sir, kada. He will under to me. Oh, all five days. He experience me. Oh, under maaval kada. Ma extra team kada. Ichi me. Oh, he karikarman ni. He karikman kuchhanda ni. Chala anand ni, sir. Chala thanks. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Bishore Narayana. I am came from fifth battalion. Now is working as APS DRF, sir. Good afternoon to all. My name is Sampath Kumar. From APSDRF team, Vijinaram District, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is B. Ashok Kumar from APSDRF, Fifth Battalion, APSP. Good afternoon to all. I'm from Nagesh. I'm from Vijayanagaram, station from APSDRF. Good afternoon to all. Good afternoon, myself, Police Department, 2009. I am working as SCI, uh, in uh, SDR, Vishakhapatnam. Here, I am very happy to sharing with all uh, experiences with the higher officers and other uh, faculties. Here, I am very happy to share with you all the experiences with the higher officers and other faculties. But, I am very happy to share with you all the experiences. I have an NID amount of the SJ, my state digestion management amount of the, my just my SPSR phone call us to me, my bail there is a crazy operation chest on. Until the sir, can you take a search up and chala visual maku, more, more experience and more knowledge sir. Because of, me wakar killing tarot, what action will be do? And willing that the rescue operation chest on, and then mundi chari process save maku theory sir. You put a search up and chala excellent maku, explain this chaper sir, and then, we don't seem to go to maku chala or to clarify you sir. <laughs> sir, here I self feel about in my, but I don't language. Sir, it's more helpful. Sir. <laughs> sir, I had more than doubt, sir. I have. Uh, if you have a topic, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Some language program. Language problem. Telugu, English, Hindi, Motta, and the other thing is that you can do it. 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 Because of that, my intention is going to all. My intention is going to all to share. Because of you are the higher officers, higher authorities. When the justice comes, we are all to your under. 
హౌ టు అంటే ఎలా అంటే మీరు మమ్మల్ని ఎలా చూసుకోవాలి మా ప్రాబ్లమ్స్ ఏంటి అనే విషయాల గురించి మీకు తెలియపరచాలని నా ఇంటెన్షన్ లో మొన్న క్వశ్చన్ అడగడం జరిగింది అయితే ఈ రోజు జరిగిన క్లాస్ లో నాకు చాలా వరకు ఐఎమ్ వెరీ వెరీ హ్యాపీ వెరీ వెరీ హ్యాపీ టు ఎందుకంటే ఆఫ్ సెట్ ఆన్ సెట్ జరిగే ఎక్సర్సైజెస్ గురించి మాకు ఇప్పుడు తెలియదు సార్ ఎక్కడైనా రెస్క్యూ ఏదైనా ప్రాబ్లం జరిగిందంటే దెన్ పోలీస్ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ అండ్ ఎస్డిఆర్ఎఫ్ అండ్ ఏఆర్ఎఫ్ విల్ యాక్షన్ బట్ ఏంటంటే మిగతా వాళ్ళకి అంటే స్కూల్ డ్రెస్ లో వస్తారు సార్ మేము అయితే యూనిఫామ్ లో వస్తాం కాబట్టి మాకు అక్కడ మేమే ఉన్నా మేమే వర్క్ చేస్తున్నాం అనుకున్నా మేము ఫీల్ అవుతున్నాం అయితే మా ముందు ఇంత స్టోరీ జరిగింది అనే విషయం మీకు ఇప్పటి వరకు మాకు తెలియదు సార్ ఇంకా కాలతీ తోతుంది ఓకే సార్ థ్యాంక్ యూ టు వన్ అండ్ ఆల్ సార్ థ్యాంక్ యూ వెరీ మచ్ గుడ్ ఆఫ్టర్నూన్ సార్ మై నేమ్ ఇస్ సత్య కిషోర్ ఐఎమ్ ఫ్రమ్ రూరల్ వాటర్ సప్లై అండ్ శానిటేషన్ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ అండ్ ఐఎమ్ వర్కింగ్ ఇన్ విజయనగరం so actually it was a nice session planned by nidm team and uh, our gvmc it was more related towards the industrial and uh, chemical disaster but uh, we as a panchayati raj jais we work under the rural areas where we are more bothered about supplying the water to, uh, towards the rural people so it was more of a chemical and industrial thing so maybe future in, we can plan again regarding the rural areas also so that might be helpful for most of us thank you so much good afternoon everyone myself madhukar rajana i am working as assistant executive engineer psc 2010 batch uh, i am working i am working in vijayanagaram thank you hi everyone i am parvati rural water supply assistant engineer working from vijayanagaram good afternoon all the dignitaries and my dear friends i am dr tirumal tulsi and i have done msc zoology msc environmental science ma english and med and uh, i have done in andhra university phd also i have done my top phd and i have studied the wetlands how they are uh, what are the anthropogenic pressures on the wetlands how the bird species are affected so uh, and after that uh, uh, doing phd i have joined in uh, st joseph college as a assistant professor uh, there and um, uh, you know that uh, in corona time uh, education uh, system is a little bit so after that uh, before that i have worked in different kvs also six kvs i have worked kendri vidyalaya and uh, after that i uh, i came into gvmc as a ward sanitation and environment secretary and uh, in the field level we are conducting many whatever i, I used to teach in the four walls to the degree students i am getting the opportunity to give awareness in my field so i am very thankful to the nid team and uh, sru daily i have to learn something new sir and uh, i am getting opportunity after coming to this so that i can serve society and all this disaster management it depends on the moral values also sir the behavioral change should be there in the society without that we can't change anything everybody know what to do and how to do but uh, the people who will come that should be the death sir we should have our moral values thank you sir thank you for giving me this up ek baj gaya now what is this status At last, I am giving my introduction here. <laughs> Myself, Harihar Kumar. Basically, I was born and brought up in Andhra Pradesh, nearby Natsi Patnam. So, earlier I worked with Gujarat State Disaster Management Authority as a sector manager. And right now, I am working with National Institute of Disaster Management in the Center for Coastal DRS under Geometrological Risk Management Division, NIDM. With that we complete uh, the self introductions from all the participants and uh, if i am not left out uh, if you need my introduction then let me also state uh, i am surya prakash uh, basically i belong to rajasthan but uh, my education from punjab uttarakhand i worked in several of the states and uh, almost throughout the country in all the states i can say for disaster management and uh, currently i am associated as professor and head of two major divisions at nidm one is 
geometrological risk management division which considers both geohazards as well as all the hydrometeorological hazards the second division is on cbrn which includes chemical biological radiological and nuclear disasters industrial and cyber disaster risk reduction and resilience division so these are the two divisions which i am heading beside that we have nine uh, specialized centers which include coastal drr which uh, mr hari is working we have specialized center on hill area disaster risk reduction as well and also early warning and communication flood monitoring cell we have a cbrn specialized center we have cyber drr center also industrial drr center and we have also the world center of excellence on landslide disaster reduction so number of uh, and we are also looking after the emergency operation center and gis at an idm so the, you can look into the diversities of the works that we carry besides that i am also responsible for nine central ministries as a nodal officer for facilitation and coordination of dm plans and uh, these include uh, the shipping uh, ministry uh, ministry of parliamentary affairs department of northeast uh, the uh, telecommunication uh, ministry of communication uh, and uh, i am also doing uh, trainings to the post uh, the provisioners of different services in the central government including the postal department income tax excise customs and uh, armed forces everywhere we are involved uh, in collaborations and currently we are also working on public health and emergency and disaster management and establishment of the public health emergency operation centers in different parts of the country as uh, part of the scheme under ayushman bharat uh, along with the cdc india which is actually the nodal institute in us it is uh, actually us based organization uh, which is actually the main advisory board during the covid times to the us government so that's how we are interconnected with various types of disasters and our programs so thank you very much Uh, while we are waiting uh, for uh, Commissioner G V M C to join with us in the valedictorian program, where we will provide you the certificates for successful completion of this program and participation in this program, uh, I would like to listen to some of the personal feedbacks. Although there will be a feedback form at our website, which you may have registered, in which you will provide in uh, the formal feedback. there are certain things which we cannot write no but uh, would always like to express and share to improve the quality and uh, the standard of these programs so i would like anyone amongst you would like to suggest us anything in the conduct of the program in the content of the program in terms of the resource person how can we improve further that is the main goal of this sir only so one thing as uh, we came to this training pro program we were expecting some mock drills and something like that but uh, we are finding some lack in that aspects only sir otherwise sir program was superb sir uh, just uh, uh, let me because uh, there is some confusions uh, sometimes i it's uh, not actually the duty and responsibility of nidm to conduct mock drills and exercise uh, these are done by our ndrf in terms of mock drills and exercise there are very specific issues because sometimes they can lead to injuries and casualties and we as academicians cannot take that risk so that's uh, one reason that none of your our programs you will not find inclusion of mock exercise or drills without involvement of our response forces okay sir <coughs> we have participants here sir uh, 
but representation is uh, suppose uh, we are from department of factories like that here in uh, andhra pradesh other representative suppose uh, revenue revenue department like the proportionate ratio should be required sir, to cover all the departments uh, we have only three people from this department uh, uh, like that the remaining department those who are involved actually uh, here uh, electrical department uh, r and v department and uh, revenue and uh, police and uh, remaining departments also there uh, police proportionately the representation required to complete our programs like that uh, at least the spread of that uh, uh, the coverage should be such a way to cover all the line department at least so at least single representation from each department like that uh, planning up like that it is very helpful sir so this type of program maybe uh, another two or three years uh, again we will we have conducted 2015 one nidm program sir three days program that program was in novotel hotel two days uh, uh, sessions completely four sessions today uh, third day uh, end of the session afternoon we have conducted an offset mock drill in hpcl so uh, we like that uh, they planned so 2015 it was uh, uh, done sir again 2007 days seven years uh, it is uh, uh, maybe such type of program again repeat after three three uh, three years or four uh, four years so the representation of participants equally that should be uh, documented as a department name how many people uh, represent, every department should be represented like that you have to plan sir that is that will be very helpful right sir. thank you <laughs> Anyone else would like to say anything? Any suggestions? I think if you do state-wise, you can pull all the line departments. Here all the states are called, no? I think it's very difficult to pull all the line departments. Sir. Sir, as a rescuer, uh, more first aid classes will be born. Yes. Thank you, sir. The suggestions. Surely we will try our best. Uh, no doubt there are always limitations. N not everything is our control. But we will make efforts. All the sessions are very informative, sir. We have learned so many things. Um, till now, I have uh, uh, I have seen like a disaster as a one subject, but here, like uh, practically, we have seen after going to HPCL. So, like that, uh, whatever that means, whatever the my, any dangerous might happen, we should know about that. Uh, some factories in Vishakhapatnam, sir. At least the local people should know, and uh, every factory should uh, that means some preventive measures should be there. So that at least by reading that, that means some dangerous gas is there. What is the composition? Like that, how is its nature? 
like that uh, something it should be dis- uh, it should be shown to the people sir so that at least the people can uh, give awareness to the nearby people so um, this session has given me lot of information sir and uh, hope to conduct more sessions sir thank you sir सर मैं इसी आई आर एफ में सर मेरा सर्विस छः साल हो गया सर हमारे डिप्टेशन पर सात साल के तक छः साल के अंदर एक्सपीरियंस जो मैं किया था ऑल ओवर स्टेट में भी फ्लड रेस्क्यू सी बी आर एम एंड सी एस आर जो भी एक्सपीरियंस लिया था एक्चुअली हम थियरी में सब कुछ चलता आप लोग जो बताता है एक्चुअली ग्राउंड में इसमें कम से कम तीस से चालीस परसेंट हो रहा है हमने देखा सर मतलब जहाँ भी हम फ्लड में जाता है वहाँ भी की जो अवेयरनेस है बहुत कम है सर एक्चुअली सी सी बी आर एन में भी कम है सर जो सर ने बताया था अभी एस जी पॉलिमर जो इंसिडेंट मैंने क्योंकि एन डी आर एफ ने फेस किया था उस दिन सुबह से लेके एक्चुअली पंद्रह दिन तक हम उधर ड्यूटी किया लेकिन मेनली ड्यूटी दो दिन का था उधर हमने जो फेस किया उसमें हम जो उसको देखा गया तो सबसे ज्यादा उसका नजदीक जो गांव है उनको कोई अवेयरनेस नहीं था मेन पॉइंट अभी कंपनी वाले बता था कि विंड डायरेक्शन हम मेन चीज क्या है छोटा सा विंड डायरेक्शन है विंड डायरेक्शन के हिसाब से हम चलना चाहिए लेकिन उसका इंड डायरेक्शन का कोई मतलब इनका जो गांव वाला पता नहीं इंड डायरेक्शन क्या होता उधर का कंपनी है कंपनी के बारे में कुछ भी मालूम नहीं है उनका जो हम उनसे पूछ रहे तो हम ऐसे कर रहे थे हमको कोई पता नहीं और दूसरा शाम के टाइम में जो दिन का हो गया शाम के टाइम में एक्चुअली किसी ने बताया कि और दूसरा बार स्प्रेड हुआ था सर वो उसके बाद उन लोग ऐसा मतलब सिचुएशन आ गया हमको रात भर नींद नहीं क्योंकि इतना परेशान हो गया जनता लोग पंद्रह किलोमीटर तक चालू करना पड़ा पूरा एरिया को क्योंकि किसी ने बता दिया अभी इसको ब्लास्ट होने वाला जो जितना भी जो लोग है उनके भाई होता है अरे अभी क्या होने वाला हमसे आगे पूछ रहे क्या होगा हम तो साइंटिस्ट पर्सनल को पता नहीं लेकिन क्या हमने भरोसा दिया मतलब भरोसे मीन्स आप लोग जहाँ भी इंसिडेंट होता है घबराना नहीं बिल्कुल उनको समझाना अगर हम गलत गाइडेंस दे दिया वो छोटा सा इंसिडेंट बड़ा हो सकता है छोटा सा पॉइंट है सर वो लेकिन बड़ा हो सकता है हम आ, इस मौके अक्सर कम से कम दस बार मौके एक्सरसाइज की है कंपनियों में इन चीज में नोटिस नहीं कर नहीं करना चाहता सर लेकिन क्या इसमें प्रॉपरली जो वर्कर्स को उनको भी कुछ मालूम नहीं हमारे पास क्या इक्विपमेंट से इस क्या काम है अब इसको भी अगर कंपनी और थोड़ा अवेयरनेस दिया जाए तो अच्छा रहेगा और फ्लड का अब बारे में तो फ्लड का तो सर मेनली अवेयरनेस सर जो अभी यूथ का पुराना वाले छोड़ दिए तो यूथ का मेन प्रॉब्लम सर किसी का स्विमिंग नहीं करना नहीं आ रहा स्विमिंग और स्कूल सेफ्टी से हमको क्या करना स्कूल सेफ्टी में कहीं देखा गया तो स्कूल सेफ्टी के अंदर भी सर इसका जो ड्रिल है वो भी मतलब नाइन्टी परसेंट भी ठीक नहीं सर टेन परसेंट तक इसका इस्तेमाल किया जा रहा है सर वो तो प्रॉपर उसको पता होना चाहिए चिल्ड्रंस को हम स्कूल में आ रहे तो हमारा एवोकेशन रूट क्या है एग्जिट रूट सबको मालूम होना चाहिए सर और दूसरा है स्विमिंग नए आने से सर बहुत ही हमको दिक्कत पड़ रहा है और दूसरा है ये सेल्फी सिस्टम का जो सेल्फी है मेन चीज सेल्फी से बहुत लोग हम डोनी केस में जाना पड़ रहा है हमको खासकर यूथ ज्यादा है सर इसमें अगर उसका स्विमिंग आएगा तो बढ़िया रहेगा सर क्योंकि हम ये रेस्क्यू कर सकते हैं इन लोग पर्सनली सेव रहेगा सेव करेगा और मैक्सिमम जाता है सर मैक्सिमम जाने के बाद जो अथॉरिटीज है हम रिक्वेस्ट कर रहा है जब आजकल जो पुराना जो हम दो साल बैक जाते तो आ, सारे आते थे गांव में कि वो फेमिक सुनने के लिए भी आते थे आजकल सिस्टम ऐसा हो गया मतलब कम इंटरेस्ट हो गया हम अवेयरनेस ज्यादा करने लग चाह रहा है लेकिन वो उन लोग कम इंटरेस्ट आ रहे इसलिए लोकल जो सरपंच है वार्ड मेंबर्स है उनकी मैं बताना चाहूंगा ज्यादा से ज्यादा जहाँ एनडीआरएफ या लोकल एस जाएगा उनसे ज्यादा से ज्यादा गाँव वालों का इकट्ठा करके जो हम 
इकट्ठा करेंगे तो हम बता सकते हैं सर इसका अवेयरनेस होगा सर और कॉलेजेस और स्कूल में भी एनुअल केस में हम आपको पता है सर आपको हरिता में दिया था एनुअल केस में स्टूडेंट्स लोग से ज्यादा स्कूल वाले को भी हम अवेयरनेस प्रोग्राम ज्यादा देंगे तो अच्छा रहेगा सर क्योंकि वो वेलेंटाइन डे सर वो हम जाने के बाद जो अवेयरनेस देता है हर बार हमको ज्यादा सवाल पूछ रहे ताकि इंटरेस्ट वही डिग्री स्टूडेंट जो भी हम लेता है वो थोड़ा सा कम है सर इनके इंटरेस्ट इसलिए सर हाँ सर इसीलिए सर सर आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू एड ऑन वॉट ई टोल्ड सर so it's a good thing he to talked about community uh, community sir because they have lot of community programs uh, in civil defense we have a concept called uh, house fire party sir there is on mandate it is that it is in civil defense act 1968 it is an house fire party it is called wherein we can introduce community radios public address system aap jo bata raha tha na so if there was an announcement made on the public address system that a gas leak ho gaya ab thoda ये करना प्रिकॉशनरी मेजर्स ये करना एवेक्युएशन करना नहीं करना बाद में बताएंगे लेकिन ये प्रिलिमिनरी इंस्ट्रक्शंस टू द कम्युनिटी कैन बी बिकॉज एंड इफ एनडीआरएफ एसडीआरएफ और ऑल डिस्ट्रिक्ट फायर पुलिस ऑल दे क्रिएट एन इंक्लूडिंग रेड क्रॉस यू व्हाट अ वाइटल रोल टू प्ले सो ऑल दिस पीपल क्रिएट एन अवेयरनेस एज यू राइटली सेड दैट विल कीप द कम्युनिटी इनफॉर्म सो दैट इज मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट इन अ डिजास्टर सो आजूबाजू आप जो बता रहा था ना विलेजेस so is to is to inform kar diya to and involve them in all that legal committees what you have no i think so it will save life save life save property i mean sir dusra incident tam narmada nadi gujarat mein gaya tha ek baar udhar bhi incident hua tha usme kya hua sir ek hostel sir ladies hostel charo taraf pani ho gaya sirf ladies hostel ko rescue karna tha humko agar hum aap se rescue kar sakte the lekin इसकी वजह से हमको ज्यादा दिक्कत पड़ा सर और रेस्क्यू करने के लिए सो so, इसमें सर लेडीज को भी ज्यादा से ज्यादा पार्टिसिपेट करने के लिए अच्छा रहेगा सर हम जहाँ जाता है वहां थोड़ा प्रॉब्लम हो रहा है सर क्योंकि लेडीज को रेस्क्यू करना तीन परसेंट ज्यादा दिक्कत होते है सर बहुत अच्छा आपने जो भी पॉइंट बोले हैं सर हम लोग विल टेक अप इनफैक्ट बीच में तो प्लानिंग ये थी कि एक स्पेशल बटालियन लेडीज का डिसास्टर रिस्पांस फोर्स में बनाया जाएगा पर समो वो नहीं हुआ अभी तक बट विल ट्राई दैट मैक्सिमम नंबर ऑफ एटलीस्ट टू सम प्रपोर्शन दे शुड बी रिप्रेजेंटिंग इन दी आवर रिस्पांस फोर्स इज आल्सो थैंक यू सर अभी दोबारा देखते हैं बिकॉज अर्लियर वी हैड एन एडिशनल सेक्रेटरी डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट एट द सेंट्रल लेवल मिसिज रजनी शेखरी एंड शी एक्चुअली प्लान एट दैट टाइम उसके बाद बीच में हमारे जेंट्सी रहे अब फिर दोबारा लेडीज इज देयर एज एडिशनल सेक्रेटरी डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट एट द नोडल ऑफिसर फ्रॉम द होम मिनिस्ट्री सो विल डिस्कस विद हर i would i would like to add something we have learned so many terms and uh, so many things in the class but actual scenario is very very different uh, it may be much much worse i have handled landslide fire incident flood drowning accidents everything i think last 5 6 months i have been handling lots of accidents but in the worst scenario is when you are approaching to the accident field or any disaster field first uh, who will invite us like the affected's family i have attended one drowning case two students they were actually swimming in a river and they drowned and we have got information we have informed all the incident commanders everybody said boat was there fire was there case everywhere this but when i landed the the first the mother of that two boys they approached me with full of tear so what i want to tell you is whatever we are studying will remain in the mind but we need a strong mindset when we are going to the field the entire scenario must be very much worse like i know in you must have been know about kavalapara landslide we have lost around 80 fam 80 persons 
just like ndrf team we were there for last 14 days continuously 14 days and we were about to remove at least 20 tons of soil that was a ender hill actually washed out during that flood so 20 tons of soil we could remove to fight a single person so that was you need to uh, mobilize the traffic you need to mobilize and you need to mobilize the volunteers food for we have to given food for ndr volunteers and the local volunteers and the ender district administration was there what i want to tell you in uh, means to everyone the volunteers the administrator and the means those who are participating in the sessions we need much 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 mental strength when you are approaching to a field where you will face lots of difficulty something you could be able to uh, what the handle but there are other things we might be might not be able to handle properly and i would like to add one more experience which i had from the uh, puttumala instance happened in oh, commissioner sir has <laughs> yeah so honorable mayor madam is on our way so till then we can i can i can give a feedbacks for further uh, <laughs> meetings we can improve yes devender we are comparing what we are teaching in the classroom and what we are showing out hmm sure hmm okay we will not run to namely ओके गो सो rajmani garu so a very good afternoon all so uh now we reached the final concluding session of five days training program here we have our distinguished delegate uh, we have honorable mayor and the honorable commissioner and we have professor surya prakash with us so i request honorable commissioner g lakshmi sir here to interact with our participants thank you dear so first first so good good afternoon everyone uh, i hope the last 5 days uh, sessions were fruitful and sorry i could not able to attend because of the again cyclone and its preparedness so and uh, for the first time it started changing its direction okay unpredictable it was very high that's why we were on i alert so luckily we had sachivalayam system you know every 2000 family has a sachivalayam here sachivalayam contains 10 officials village level officials like secretaries now ward sanitation secretary and municipal secretary welfare secretary admin secretary and anm so so on and power energy secretary so they will be uh, taking care of this 200 2000 families so for everything for scheme implementation for any response or a disaster rehabilitation even essential services and feedback system everything will be happening through this 10 official for that uh, 2000 families so uh, such uh, 578 sachivalayam we have so alertness was so high so we made this sachivalayam system to work around the clock means during night also it was uh, kept open and two people were kept as in charge so anything happens for the 2000 families so they will be reporting us we will be attending uh, based on the need so that was the system we alerted and system is there in andhra pradesh only so mainly in a city like visakhapatnam coastal city we don't know when the cyclone will come so disturbance will be there so this is very handy and helping us so like civil defense organizations uh, this system is working okay so that's why i was busy could not attend and hopefully i gone through the 
schedule and the sessions so by and large they were interesting uh, so uh, yeah. thanks for all of you for attending and all the resource persons uh, for uh, enlightening uh, the participants and making this workshop fruitful and i thank honorable mayor madam for inaugurating and also uh, for being with us on uh, this day for valedictory session and all the officer from different states across the country and all the resource persons and the representative from national institute of disaster management and thanks to the national institute of disaster management for accepting and uh, giving us the opportunity to host such a excellent uh, workshop and i urge the nadm to give much more such uh, uh, programs to our city um, and city it is a city of destiny you know everybody would like to come here and would love to come here uh, inspired by this program so we will be hosting much more uh, with uh, more number of uh, participants from across the country so thank you very much nidm and thanks all the participants and please uh, do visit our city and do give your feedback for improving the workshop also and also city okay city also you must have roamed you must have seen some places if there are any suggestions uh, which you can suggest to us we will be welcoming it and next time when you visit we will try to see that so your suggestions is uh, a scene in action okay thank you very much for everyone and thanks once again thank you sir uh, now may i request uh, our honorable women mayor bhavani hari venkata kumari garu to give us an address to the participants good afternoon to everyone first i would like to appreciate the national institute of disaster management new delhi for coming forward to conduct this training program in visakhapatnam through the gvmc disaster management is one of the major task of the government it involves saving lives of the people and reduce damages it is very important to adopt uh, disaster risk reduction practices and improve capacity of uh, the government officials in disaster management and emergency operations government actions cannot be successful in uh, disaster management without people and stakeholders involvement previously gvmc has implemented the undp projects uh, which are related to the capacity building in the areas of disaster management now we are implementing various activities uh, through the sru gvmc i appreciate the nidm for conducting this five day national level training program on uh, disaster management through the gvmc visakhapatnam i appreciate all the participants for attending this training program i request nidm to come forward the conducting more programs with the gvmc thank you all of you thank you madam thank you very much now it is time to felicitate our uh, respected uh, professor suri prakash garu uh, i request mayor ma ma madam and commissioner sir to felicitate our professor suri prakash garu please Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Now, uh, I request Professor uh, 
సూర్య ప్రకాష్ గారు టు అడ్రస్ ద పార్టిసిపెంట్స్ ప్లీజ్ థ్యాంక్ యూ డాక్టర్ రాజమణిజీ విత్ డ్యూ రిస్పెక్ట్స్ టు ఆనరేబుల్ మేయర్ విశాఖపట్నం అండ్ కమిషనర్ జీవీఎంసీ ఆల్ ద డిస్టింగ్విష్ పార్టిసిపెంట్స్ డెలిగేట్స్ అండ్ ది అటెండెన్స్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ ప్రోగ్రామ్ ఫస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ఆల్ ఐ వుడ్ లైక్ టు ఎక్స్ప్రెస్ మై హార్ట్ ఫర్ థ్యాంక్స్ టు జీవీఎంసీ ఫర్ అక్సెప్టింగ్ అవర్ ఇన్విటేషన్ టు హోస్ట్ దిస్ ప్రోగ్రామ్ at a very short notice this program has been organized meant with the uh, numbers of participants from various parts of the country and the logistics requirements that were to be uh, expected for this program they have heartfully extended all the necessary support and on behalf of nidm ministry of home affairs and on my personal behalf along with my colleague mr hari i would like to express our sincere thanks and gratitude to them next thing i would like to mention is that we had uh, actually prepared a tentative schedule even we were not very sure whether we will get the resource persons due to the uh, impending cyclone activities which we had noticed and uh, even we were very much worried about the safety of our participants as well and if you remember that uh, some of our resource persons who were expected to come from delhi they couldn't arrive due to that cyclone because all flights were cancelled for two days and there were no operation of uh, the airline activities due to that cyclone but uh, somehow i would say we were all fortunate because uh, the other fear that i had in mind while coming to bishakhapatnam was the scorching heat of the southern part of the india in the terms of heat waves that we always uh, are expecting during uh, these periods due to changing climatic conditions it has also cooled down we actually had a very good weather due to cyclone cyclone actually proved otherwise for all of us to have a good uh, windy and rainy weather conditions uh, which actually uh, put us in a different situation and had a different perspective of Vishakha Patna and all necessary support in terms of field budget to H- HPCL and uh, all other places was made and the local uh, resource persons were also very good. so that way we are very thankful and our participants i would like to conclude before concluding say thanks to them for being interactive it was not a unilateral presentation program but lot of discussions were involved in fact some of the participants they became resource persons i would like to say thanks to our uh, inspector factory is here from bishakhapatnam he actually dealt with that matter so Uh, no nicely uh, that everything was very clear that how the system works what are the legal provisions available and how these meetings are carried out how these uh, different crisis groups they are working for safety in chemical and industrial sectors so there are lot of provisions available and just said by many of the participant at the grassroots levels uh, there are lot of differences that we will find what we act- have in the classrooms and what we come across at the gra- uh, ground levels so no doubt we should work out with our practices at the grassroots levels the realities of the disaster situations and be prepared against them and then uh, meet the challenges and the needs for the disaster situations so i wish all the best to everyone and uh, safe healthy good quality life on an equitable justifiable and right based manner with good fraternity amongst all of us and uh, thank you all uh, including the distinguished honorable guests uh, of this program at the valediction miss near and uh, commissioner jvmc uh, and all the participants thank you all for all cooperation and support in the success of this program thank you thank you sir now may i request commissioner sir and mayor madam to distribute certificates to few participants
Miss Sri Dhanya Suresh, IAS from Kerala. Okay. Um, Shri Devendra Singh Bahuji. Uh, 